when you make ground Ooh, won't you come in for a night Can you, baby won't you take me take me to the paradise Your attention, I'm running out your mind. Don't know the direction to your side. Got the wrong impression. I thought that we were fine. Hello, 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 everybody. Happy freaking weekend. It's been a little bit. It's been a while, I'd have to say. Things have been uh, a bit quiet around this part of the internet. Probably due to the fact that uh, Morgan and I were away in uh in toronto from monday through friday for a fun little trip we just got in last night it was a very very good trip it was a lot of fun it's good to be back though it's very very good to be back i've got a lot of stuff planned for the rest of this month uh some of it i cannot talk about yet which is really wild and cool um but y'all y'all will see you know you will all get to see in the meantime though there's going to be a ton of short-form content. I've been having a blast with short-form content. Secret news? Yeah, secret news. Hello, everybody, by the way. Ren, how we doing? May, hello. Hi. Cosmic Jewels, how we doing? Cup of Sun, hello. Halloween. Hi, everybody. Bree, hey, what's up? Welcome. Apollo, good to see you here. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'm so sorry I can't share some of the, good, uh, the secret news yet. Welcome back to the States. Yes. Very, very excited to be back home. Uh, Morgan and I had a really nice Airbnb. Like, the location was so good. It was right downtown in Toronto, uh, literally around the corner from Eaton Center. So, like, the whole shopping district was walkable. But the bed there sucked. It. I, I don't know what happened to it. I, I feel like a previous guest accidentally, like, broke the bed frame. We were making jokes that they were maybe you know a little bit too hard on it or something uh but it was like completely sagged in the middle so like when we were on it we'd roll into the middle um and there's just like no way to to really like support the middle of it um so it was very uncomfortable bed outside of that though everything else was great about the room finally got an airbnb with like good water pressure in the shower and stuff uh that was me uh realizing my oh okay yeah that's a Listen, a bunch of subs are running out right now for people. Completely understandable. I mean, I I lost like 30 followers here because I just didn't stream for the past like week. And uh, like 30 subs or something, like some huge amount. So it happens. That said, it is September. So, you know, people who are trying to like resub for multiple months and stuff, you do get savings, which is kind of good. Um, did you enjoy all the Canadian pizza? Yes, I, we had a great time. Uh, we did our, our traditional, like, eat pizza pizza. Like, just order a bunch of, like, really cheap pizza to the room and, um, did that the first night. We always try to do that, like, the first night we're in Toronto. And then, wait, I'm not even on the screen. Hold up. <laughs> I'll talk about all this stuff, uh, as he the night goes on. Hello, hi. Nothing like sleeping in a sag a saggy pocket, right, Run? 
Corey, thank you so much. 43 freaking months. Speaking of a big resub, thank you. He Thanks so much for that support. Cold. That's really nice she's of you. Flame Burb, body. what the heck? Thank you for using your Prime here. 13 months. I appreciate that. Thank you so, so much. Forgot to take my meds so everybody do it. KD Cutie Cat, that's a great reminder to he people. Only likes her because she's Mr. Cold. Flim she's Fan, cold. thank you for the compliment about my hair. I grew it myself. Wow, 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 Wild, wow, I know. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Believe it, I just I just had a um, auditory hallucination live on stream either that or god dang that was so funny um <laughs> Pagan thank you so much for the 38 months uh, Tess thank you for the 38 months appreciate that a ton it's really really nice of you thank you thank you for the hype train what the hell thank you everybody oh my god Max listen we're doing a uh, power wash them tonight so you probably won't be like startled awake or anything it's good to be back though it's good to see everybody here thank you so much for 33 months max it's really nice yo what's up lulu hello hi welcome to the stream what what is it that you always normally say it's kia aura is that the new zealander thing I, i'm probably saying that really wrong i definitely forgot to take my meds okay well yeah take them make sure that you take those yeah kia aura awesome i think i i at least read that phonetically correctly i probably didn't pronounce it correctly but you know i'm trying hello everybody i forgot what story i was sharing uh yeah bed was saggy at the airbnb um outside of that though room was beautiful location was great uh we walked like six miles every day which was wild like we were just like toronto's so walkable it was really easy to get to other neighborhoods just walking around plus we were trying to save money um by not spending it all on like ubers and lifts and stuff uh, but we got to go to like all these neighborhoods that we've been wanting to go to that we normally don't get to go to because um, the last time every other trip we've gone to Toronto was like with a group of people or friends or whatever and we weren't able to be on our own schedule and explore at our own pace so this trip was perfect for that we just took our time when we needed a break we just like go back to our room and rest and then like go back out and go shopping or get dinner or whatever we needed to do we ate so much food I got I ate so much good poutine um, by the way, uh, anyone who donated money to me um, via Twitch or via uh, PayPal or um, Kofi, which I still didn't set up fully yet, thank you very much for the, the snack money. We were able to get some like good Canadian snacks and some poutine and stuff. I brought back a shit ton of Wonder Bars. Uh, I have some Bounty Bars. I have some Coffee Crisp. I have some Smarties, some really good stuff. Uh, it's pronounced Kiora. Oh, like one one word all together, kind of. Free leg Uber powered by poutine. Truly, <laughs> yeah. We we just walked everywhere. Corey, uh, it's not set up yet, so there's no uh, Kofi link yet or no Kofi command. But thank you very much. I appreciate the chaos that you bring to chat. Bounty so good. I love bounty bars, Apollo. They're really good. Really, really tasty. Um. But, yeah, we had a great time. We had a lot of really good dinners. We tried some restaurants we've never had before. Uh, still have not tried Nando's, so we didn't use that gift card yet. I'm so sorry um, that I can't give an update on, on how we feel about Nando's. Uh, but we'll go back because we love Toronto. And also, we got to, um, you know, on the way out, meet up with some friends. We got to see Ashley uh, Roboto and Max. Uh, her partner and um, stop by their new house, which was awesome. It was so so fun to be able to just hang out Have a good time. How many poutines? Uh, squeebles. I uh, not as many as I would have liked We didn't make it to smokes this time, which was kind of a bummer because that's like my favorite uh, But I got some New York fries. I had this amazing breakfast poutine at a place called expectation which I guess is a Canadian franchise that's like a breakfast place. I did not know about that. But we dropped by there one of the mornings for breakfast, and they had this incredible breakfast poutine that had like sausage, uh, eggs, uh, like bacon, and all this other stuff mixed in. And then instead of fries, it used these like thin sliced potatoes that were seasoned really well and all smothered in gravy and cheese. It was amazing. It was the best. It was the best thing in the world. It was the best way to start the day. So, yeah. Uh, I used to see Bounty Bars in the corner store all the time, but I haven't seen it in a while. That's what I, I feel like it's because... All right, this is going to be just based off vibes, but I feel like Bounty Bars are like an old person candy. 
You know, it's sort of like Almond Joy in the States. It's the same candy bar, basically. But it's like very much like an old people candy. I get that vibe from Bounty Bars. It, like, its packaging doesn't even look like it was updated since the 80s. So, you know. Um, but they're good. I personally like them. So, I, But I, I feel like the, the youngins don't like them as much, you know. You're going to make me hungry? Lulu, it, it was so good. I'm sorry if me talking about all the food that I ate makes anyone hungry. Yo, what's up, Nettles? Hello, I'm lurking, accidentally burning myself with hot glue. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. I leave for a week, and all of you can't be trusted with craft supplies anymore. Good lord. Beans, hello, hi. Always find them at Circle K. I didn't check any of the Circle Ks. I mainly just went to Shoppers while I was there to, like, just grab some, uh, some... Oh, by the way, if you didn't see over on the Discord, I finally found, um... I finally found, uh... No name. I, I had to remember what the, the brand name was for a second there. But the, the no name brand that all Canadians have told me to try finally like found no name uh, all dress chips like at one of the shoppers we went to. Where and it was so food? good. I must know. It was, also, those I were some of the best all dress best chips I've ever had. Uh, yo, thank you so much, Blogger Says What Free. Speaking of someone who um, donated money via Kofi, thank you so much for your support. It's really, really nice of you. That was not something you had to do, but I appreciate that you did it. Um, my favorite poutine was I, I got a, a breakfast poutine I was just talking about a second ago uh, where it was like thin sliced potatoes instead of fries, um, but it had like sausage and bacon and eggs mixed in it with the cheese and the gravy, and it was the best poutine I think I've ever had. It was so, so good. I didn't even know about expectation. We were just looking up breakfast places. I was like, oh, this place has, like, a really good rating. Um, and I didn't realize that there it was, like, a breakfast chain. Sort of, like, Canadian. Like, it was, like, a smaller franchise. I think it only is, like, ten locations around Canada. But it was so good. So good. I had to for the poutine review. I will be revealing. So, I took pictures of all my meals. Whenever I finally set up my Kofi... I will put that up as Kofi content. All the food that I ate while I was there. And some of the, like, touristy pictures that Morgan and I took. Um, but, oh my god, it was so good. It was so good. It was amazing. But, yeah, I had never tried No Name Brand. You guys have yelled at me for years to find No Name Brand. Um, so I found a bunch of it. And I I had some all dress chips, which were no, great. And then, um... Wait, what is happening? Also, by the way, Blogger says what? Bree, thank you for the 55 freaking months at Tier 3. What the heck? Thank you! Thank you. Also, thank you for gifting a sub to Cup of Sun. Cup of Sun, enjoy the emotes. Enjoy the sub badge. Make sure you're saying thank you to it. To Blogger Says What Bree. Thank you very much. What the heck? They're very, very kind. Incredibly supportive. What the heck? Once again, I will send you no name. Sarah. Oh, my God. Thank you. I mean, if you do, I'm not going to say no to that. I, that was the first no name product I ever tried. And it was really good. Uh, so, my the snacks that I got for the room with the money that was sent via Kofi... Um, outside of the poutine that I ate, uh, by the way, again, New York fries, someone slammed New York fries on my timeline and I just like hid their reply. Cause I was like, no, we don't take this class as bullshit here. New York fries are great. They're so good. Um, there's a fly on my TV hanging out on Brian's face. He's a fly guy. What if I just start smacking myself and it actually kills the fly through the screen? Would that be amazing? Would that be wild? New York fries are amazing. Thank you, Cup of Sun. They're very yummy. Very, very yummy. Do um, you have a, a P.O. Box? I do. I do. I'll send New Zealand snacks. Oh, my God. Lulu, I've actually had a number of people from New Zealand send snacks uh, to me. And I love I love New Zealand snacks, honestly. Um, yeah, New York fries are so good. Thank you, Apollo. Thank you. See, this we appreciate people who are not classist here, who enjoy just good, tasty food. Something quick and cheap. Oh, man. New York fries are better uh, when you're not in New York. <laughs> well, I didn't have them in New York. I had them when I was in the in Eaton Center, actually. Morgan and I just stopped down in the food court there for a quick pick-me-up. Because we were, like, walking around. We walked, like, six miles every day. Um, we went to a lot of Indigo bookstores, which is uh, you know, basically they're, like, Barnes & Noble there. Really good bookstores, though. A lot of selection. I uh, got a lot of good ideas for what I want to, like, borrow from the library. Uh... I'll do it. Uh, I'll even send a few New Zealand coins for you to make fun of. Wait, make fun of? Why would I ever make fun of money? I'm a streamer. All I care about is money. 
<laughs> uh, I like No Name just because it looks like uh, when in video games they don't want to design food packaging. Yeah, so like a lot of people here have told me for years, like it's just like a a weird, very minimal brand. Um, I I liked it a lot. I I wanted to try some of the other uh, products, but I bought a shit ton of Wonder Bar. I bought so much Wonder Bar because uh, it's my favorite candy bar from Canada. Um, like I said, I bought some Bounty Bars. I bought um, Coffee Crisp. And I bought Smarties, um, and those were, those are all the Canadian candies that I got. Uh, but we had like pizza, pizza as a snack when we first got in. Um, we had we ate at a, another franchise, a Canadian franchise called, uh, wait, what the, f oh, I forgot the name of it. It starts with the Earls, Earls. Indigo's like drugs to me. I should not be responsible in my finance. It is Apollo. Here's the thing. It is so hard to walk into Indigo and not want to buy everything. Truly. Uh, it's not my first time in Indigo either, but it's just, it's a dangerous place to be. I need to know when you were at Eaton Center because Santa and I were there on Thursday. We visited it at least once a day. So we might have been there at the same time. I'm not sure. Normally it was like early afternoon that we were out and about. Um, but uh, we went to an Eaton Center. We were out by the shopping district for a while. Um, but yeah, we we had a lot of really good food while we were there. How's Nando's? We actually didn't get it. It's funny we brought the gift card this time, and um, like halfway through the trip, I was like, "Shit, babe, we didn't go to Nando's yet. What the hell's wrong with us?" And Morgan was like, "That's fine. We'll we'll just do it next trip, because we'll we'll be up in Toronto again sometime soon, most likely." So so we did not end up going. Um, that said, uh, we tried Earl's, which was like this upscale bar restaurant place that was kind of nice. Uh, that would. I had an amazing, amazing, uh, like, I, th I think it was like a Kung Pao noodle thing or something. It was really good. It was like white Canadian spin on Asian food, but it ended up being very good. Uh, we had incredible Japanese ramen at, at uh, Kintan Ramen, which we had tried, I think, last year for the first time. And we tried it again because uh, we wanted one of the nights to just be like a little date night where we stayed in the room and we got delivery morgan ordered delivery and then we watched uh movies in our room the whole night and read and that was really fun it was really really good but kintan is really good um earls i've heard is overpriced and underwhelming ours was good we liked it a lot it was very expensive though i won't lie it's like very very expensive but that could also be due to like what's going on in the canadian economy at the moment which is like from what i saw is 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 kind of rough I want to get into more ramen places slash recipes. Ramen is just like, it's one of those all-purpose, very easy to make and very easy to, you know, find variations of type of food. I love, I love ramen. Uh, Jenna, yo, 40 freaking months. What the heck? Thank you very much. Gerboomer for sure, though. Thank you so, so much. We don't talk about groceries. Oh, my God. I, we were doing the... <laughs> we felt bad because we were like, oh my god, everything in Canada, even in downtown Toronto, is like fairly cheap compared to the States because we live in New York State where everything's really expensive. Right now, the Canadian dollar is a, like 73 cents against the US dollar. So one Canadian dollar is worth 73 cents um, American at the moment. So everything that we bought... We were like, oh, wow, we're actually, like, saving a shit ton of money buying it here in Canada. Um, I feel I, I feel bad for those of you who are being very affected by that. But I got to say, as a tourist, it was kind of, I, I infused your economy with American dollars. I did. I bought a lot of poutine. I bought a lot of Canadian snacks and poutine and stuff like that. Um, when did I get tiny stars on my EV and why am I just noticing it? So you get the little stars if you're a higher tier than tier one. Um, so the, the fact that you're tier three right now, which is phenomenal. Thank you so much for that. Um, that's why you get those cute little stars. Um, so thank you. Uh, when Canadians order from the States and it's like, oh, $140. Wait, no, it's $200 Canadian. Yeah, Squeebles. That was the thing. We went into, there was a GameStop there and we went in there, um, and like RIP EB games. Uh, but we went into GameStop and... Starfield was out so like the new game Starfield was out on the shelf and I was like oh cool maybe I can get like a really good deal on some video games here because like that's like a $70 game here in the states or whatever and it was like $90 Canadian and I was like oh I totally understand why 
when like new games come out like all of my canadian fans are like holy shit what what no way like i can't afford to buy more games right now inflation's fun right it has shrinkflation too we're getting smaller portions for higher prices it's wild so again very appreciated that people donated money to me while i was out um thank you so much for all the support that was really really cool Morgan and I really got to enjoy our trip. We got to eat a lot of really good food. We got to hang out. Uh, we didn't do anything, like, crazy and expensive. We didn't go, like, um, you know, to anything that costs money. We just, like, walked around. Uh, Morgan did buy me a really nice dress from H&M, which was cute. Uh, and I bought her one as well. Or I, or I bought her uh, some bath products to, like, self-care and everything. Fallen, what's up? Hello. Hi. Welcome to the stream. Uh... Hope you and Morgan had fun in Canada. We did. 72 Muses. Yeah, it's so expensive here in Canada. Yeah, yeah. It was, again, not for, like, the conversion rate was great for me. But anyone who lives in Canada, I'm so sorry, like, genuinely, that your economy is, like, on fire. Even more than in the States. But that said, when we came back, we were at, we were literally just going grocery shopping um, a couple hours ago. And within the week we were gone, the price of some stuff went up. And we we're like, oh, okay, well, I guess it's just going to be that, you know, quarter four of 2023. It's going to be that kind of year. Fun. Um, Y'all look so cute. Thank you. I appreciate that. We, Yeah, we found, like, um, a lot of fun places to take pictures and stuff. And uh, Toronto's just, like, a really active city, which was wonderful. I did the math. $90 Canadian for Starfield is $65.89 US. Uh, making it less than it is in America? Shit, I should have bought it there. I'm probably just going to get a review code, honestly, but okay. I mean, at least it's, it would have been cheaper if I had pulled the plug on that. I didn't, though, or pulled the trigger on that. I didn't, though. Groceries are bad. The housing market is hell. Yeah, um, again, so I we, we went to go visit uh, Ashley and Max um, while we were there. If you guys don't know my friend Ashley Roboto, easily one of my favorite people in the entire world. Um, but they were talking about the housing market in Canada because we were like, you know, there's been moments we've thought about, like, moving just because New York is very expensive. Um, we've thought about, like, moving up to that area. Uh, but uh, they were like, not this second. They were like, we were lucky with the timing of our purchase, but they were like, not, don't do it right now. But they were like, we'll keep an eye out, you know, kind of thing. It's the same when Tess comes over from the UK. She's loaded, whereas I'm broke when I go there. <laughs> We say that you're gonna try the makeup from the filter. You looked super good. What the heck? Thank you. That's really nice of you. Thank you. Um, I do want to. I, I was like taking a ton of pictures of myself with that TikTok makeup filter, uh, with the like winged eyeliner. If you guys saw the pictures of that, if you didn't, I'll I'll bring up one. Um, but everyone was being really nice and and supportive about like how I looked with it on, uh, and I was just kind of having fun with it, right? But I was, I kept taking pictures like this and I'd be like, hey, uh, could we like replicate this to Morgan? And she was just like, yeah, actually very easily. So I'm just going to do like the e-girl blush thing and like a little bit of winged eyeliner. Um, probably just as like a casual makeup look one of these days. Uh, I was playing like, <laughs> I just played around with it. I thought it was cute. I thought it was fun. I thought it was a very fun look. Cut a shiny Grabigli? Oh my god. Throw it away. Transfer it to the professor. Immediately. Captain Photon, hello. You literally look so good with it. Thank you. That's really nice of you. Such a good look with your facial structure. You look so cute. <laughs> I did not go live to be attacked this way. Publicly. What the heck? Thank you very, very much. Um, I will say this. Uh, a lot of you have missed some of the streams. Probably haven't heard this yet, but... Uh, those of you who've been around, you've been hearing me talk about this a lot. My um, self-body image has not been great recently. I especially haven't been feeling very femme. Um, so it's been really hard for me to get into the mood to do cosplay again and get dressed up, get made up. Um, so that's why there's been a, a lack of that over the past couple months. But playing around with the filters and, and seeing everyone compliment me and stuff has made me feel a little bit better. So Morgan and I are going to make a really concentrated effort the rest of the year to do a lot more femme cosplay, a lot more femme uh, presentation for me and, and whatnot. Uh, so hopefully you'll see some of that over on Instagram and here and uh, wherever. So yeah, <laughs> get loved on. 
I can't do anything about it. Every time, every time I got like a notification, someone sent me money via Kofi or PayPal or whatever during the trip. I was like, babe, they're doing it again. How do I stop? How do I stop them? How do I write to them? Like, not they don't have to do this much. I'm uh, glad the filter helped you feel gender. Thank you, Squeevils. Thank you. There is so many. The other thing about Toronto that I love is it's such an active city. There's just so much going on in it. Anime fangirl, hello, hi, welcome to the stream. Um that there were just like so many people in like really cute outfits and like had really cute makeup and like hair and uh a lot of them were like asian girls walking around in these like super cute outfits and like they had these like cool bangs or they had like cool you know makeup looks on and i was like i would turn to morgan i'd be like could i pull that off and she'd be like of course you could yeah absolutely like let's let's do that when you get back so um, that was really nice. I wanted to compliment all of them, but I didn't want to come across as, like, a creepy dude who was, like, coming up and being like, I really like your makeup. Like, I didn't want to do that. So, and there are just so many of them. I would have had to stop, like, every, like, five girls on the street to say that. There are just so many. A lot of inspiration, fortunately. But I love Toronto, like, how busy it is, um, how many people you get to see. And, like, no one's, like, bothering each other there. The first one, I genuinely thought it was makeup. That was a good filter. Yeah, it's a really good filter over there. Uh, all, all the TikTok ones are the ones I've been playing around with if people want to know. Um, welcome back from your trip. Thank you. Strike for past you. <laughs> Listen, Liz, I don't need to... I, I, I struggle enough in the present. I don't need my, my past attacked as well. Someone say bangs? Oh, we've activated Squeeble's uh, personality trait. Which is amazing. But here's the thing. Squeeble's, you put up the pictures of your bangs in the Discord. They look great. I completely understand why you're like so into it. Um, glad I didn't run into y'all or I would have shoved y'all into the nearest Starbucks for a coffee on me. We intentionally, here's the thing, Sarah. We intentionally were trying to find local Toronto places to get coffee at. Um, there was one that was like maybe a block away from our Airbnb. Uh, and it was called, I think it was called the Neen Coffee. Um, it's right by Eaton Center. But let me try to find a picture of it. It was so good. It was amazing. And then we tried to, there was a, Japanese coffee shop that we found um, out in oh god I forgot the name of the, the street but there was like a shit ton of Asian restaurants around it we ended up going back there for our final night to eat at this Korean restaurant that was like this modernized Korean cuisine that was so good they didn't serve banchan so I was like a little bit sad about that there was no like the banchan appetizers but the food uh, portions made up for it it was so tasty it was really, really good. Spadana, I think it was on Spadana. I think you're right. Um, but uh, did you uh, correctly guess what is in my great pumpkin Charlie Brown cup? Wait, what? <laughs> Y'all on the Discord are so cute, so gorgeous, so slay, prettiest community. Beans, you're so right about that, though. Let me try to find out the name of the... Oh, man. Oh, I forgot about this. I'll say this. So Earl's was really expensive, but there was this dip that they had there that was like... Um, it's this here. It's not that. That was, like, truffle fries we got. But there's this dip that they had. They give you basically, like, a whole loaf of bread with spinach avocado dip. And we were like, that's such a weird combination. We have to try it. It was possibly the best dip I've ever had in my life. It was on Dundas. It was a matcha latte shop. There we go. Morgan knows. I have no GPS in my brain at all. Um, Morgan is the one who knows where we go. So... What the hell is the coffee shop name? I think it was Deneen. But I could be... Oh, here we go. Okay, so the one coffee shop we went to that was uh, the Asian coffee shop, the, the Japanese coffee shop, was uh, Sujiri. It was so cute inside, but it was called Sujiri. So if you're in Toronto, go check out Sujiri. They have really good matcha uh, and ice cream, apparently. Which we did not get any of the ice cream. By the way, if you missed this, I, I got I got so much Wonder Bar. I got so much Wonder Bar while we were there. I ate so much of it every night. Oh my god. Um, here's the uh, the Korean restaurant we went to. Was called Horongi Sikdong, which uh, just means Tiger Restaurant in Korean. Ultra modern, ultra cool. It was like, definitely give that a try if you're in Toronto. Some of the best Korean food I've ever had. It was like a weird, like, modernized fusion of, like, traditional Korean recipes. 
You had me at matcha? Oh, it was so good. It was like really, really strong matcha in it too. Deadass almost went there last week. Sandy, you gotta go. It's good. It's good. Very good matcha. Um, J Rose, what's up? Good to see you. Hello. Love matcha? Yeah, it's awesome. It's actually very tasty. Really good matcha drink is like the best thing ever. Like if it's just okay, it's okay. But when it's really good, it's incredible. Yeah, so I got a white chocolate matcha drink there. And it was amazing. Yeah, Deneen Coffee Company is the best coffee shop. Yeah, so that was the coffee shop we went back to two times because we liked it so much. Um, but it's right near Eaton Center. Uh, it's called Deneen Coffee Company. And it's super quick, really affordable. Uh, coffee was so good. So good. They have like outdoor seating there as well as indoor seating. So, some good shit. My friend took me to a Korean restaurant for the first time, and it was so good. Korean cuisine, elite. That's all I gotta say. Like, it is elite. I know I'm a little bit biased, but Korean food is, like, my favorite. Truly. Very, very good stuff. Um, yo, Alexis is tired. Thank you so much for the 25 months. I appreciate that a ton. Thank you very, very much. What the heck? A lot of big resubs. Can we get a little bit of pride spam and some uh, some hype in the chat? It's been a long time since I've been live. So it will be very, very cool to be able to hang out with everybody. And uh, celebrate people's big resubs and, and everything. Your bias is correct, though. What can I say? Koreans make some really hearty, very, like, it's like soul food. It's, like, so good. It just, like, it heals your spirit when you eat it. It's, like, very, I don't know. Just, it, ugh. I, I, I don't know how to describe Korean food, except it's like good home cooking that heals your spirits. Um, but Morgan and I got incredible. We had uh, probably the best topoki I've ever had in my entire life. Um, it came in this basil cream sauce, which like is, again, it's not traditional Korean. It's like a traditional Korean recipe that's been like modernized and, and uh, mixed with some like unorthodox ingredients. And it was so good. It was, ah, uh, God, it was life-changing. I, I don't know if I can eat regular, like, topoki ever again. Um, it's time to clean the meat sack. I shall be back. Sarah, I hope that you have a good bath slash shower. Since I've been working graveyard shifts, I feel bad I haven't been able to join much. Alexis, no, it's all good. I was literally just away uh, from Monday through Friday this week. So uh, you, you didn't miss very much. I've been gone for almost a week. So it's good to see you here. Mm, soul food or soul food you know tell you that's funny that you made that joke because there was um a weed shop near where we are were like a dispensary that was called uh <laughs> it was like called like soul smoke or something run by a korean guy who wanted to destigmatize uh like marijuana for koreans because korean culture is very anti-weed so he created like a, a dispensary that was all korean like themed <laughs> Uh, hello, by the way, Tally. Good to have you here. I had beef tartare bibimbap. It was so good. Yeah, Morgan Morgan had, like, one of the best-looking bibimbaps ever. But it was so good. It was incredible. Um, soul Smoke, I love... Right? Yeah, it was so funny. Uh, but, like, I read his whole about page, and he was like, Koreans still criminalize marijuana so much, and a lot of people, uh, even if they grow up in, you know, the West who moved back to Korea are then arrested and jailed for this, like, non-violent crime. And I just want to destigmatize that. So I'm going to do that by opening up a dispensary in Toronto. <laughs> and I was like, that's the funniest freaking thing I've ever seen. That's awesome. Good for that guy. I didn't go in. I don't know how the prices were. Who knows? But good for him. Uh, iconic, right? Love that. Hi, Brandon Morgan. Yeah, hi. It's good to see you here. Only a stoner. <laughs> Uh, there's a girl belief shop in my town that my best friend's mom went to with a coworker because she thought it was a sushi place. Oh my god, that's so funny. Was it Tokyo Smoke by any chance? Because there's a million Tokyo Smoke locations all over Toronto. And I will say that from the outside, it does kind of look like it's probably going to be a Japanese restaurant. It was? <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, what makes matcha different from green tea? Um, it's a ground powder. So it's a dried ground powder versus a... Uh, oh, Morgan's answering it. Okay, never mind. Thank you, Morgan. Um, epic. Yeah, it was so... That's so funny that that happened. I can see it happening, especially if you're from out of town or if you're like a, a tourist or something. Or if you're like older and you don't know. 
a lot of those dispensaries have these like nice clean displays like in the window they have like all this like really like fancy lettering it looks like a restaurant from the outside of a lot of dispensaries and there's just so many there it's like every three businesses a dispensary in downtown toronto so also supposed to be brewed slash made a specific way traditionally yes yeah 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 um does it change how it tastes yeah it's like a deeper earthier flavor in my opinion um i like it a lot but it definitely has a little bit of like a a flavor learning curve if you've never had it before notice dispensaries used to not have blocked slash frosted windows but now they do i don't know like maybe that's like a safety thing maybe it's a law thing i don't know anything about like the canadian weed scene really to be fair it was in between three other restaurants yeah that's the thing apollo is like the coolest thing about Toronto is that it has enough old school history that there's like all these small businesses um, mixed in with like big chains. And then like there's just like you'll have like a clothing store, a weed dispensary, a restaurant all next to each other all on the same block. Uh, it's just such a mix and match type of scenario no matter where you go in Toronto. I kind of love that though. There's like no pretense. Like we went to like a, a vintage record store, like a vinyl store to like look at their selection. Um, and it was right next to, like, a, I, I can't remember, like a Foot Locker or something. So it, it's a cool mix. Uh, some vanilla with matcha is incredible. Yeah, Austin, like I was saying, I had a, a white chocolate matcha um, while we were there, and it was so good. It was delicious. Some dispensaries that look like high-end restaurants. There's, like, this, yeah, that's the thing. Is like So we're getting, like, a lot of dispensaries in New York because weed is legal here now. Um, some of them look like they're Apple stores. They look like those, like, I fix your iPhone screen stores uh there's definitely a difference between the quality grades of matcha yeah yeah there's I, i've heard that before shout out to the dispensary and union station <laughs> what's up firefly how we doing uh but yeah there's there's a lot of really very deceptive looking dispensaries everywhere now so i get why especially if you're someone from the older generation who's not used to those being everywhere that it's confusing or if you're someone from who's out of town and stuff like we saw like a bunch of people like wander in look around and be like this is not what i expected and then leave so um that's very very funny <laughs> but uh yeah we had we had a great time um again we didn't do anything like crazy we didn't go to like any museums or uh aquariums or shows or anything this trip we just walked around because we wanted to explore the city for the first time pretty much uh, ever on our own schedule um and also just try out a bunch of good food because that's like something morgan and i like to do is just eat really good food together there's a dispensary in my town but it's very obvious it's a dispensary yeah that's how a lot of them in new york have like the gigantic weed leaf on the front so it's like you wouldn't be able to make that mistake but in canada some of them do not really advertise that out and out front um there's a lot of people who could just like wander in those for sure i'm in the mood for mochi matcha yeah, ma uh, matcha, matcha mochi is very yummy. Uh, geez, Brittany's hello. Hi. Welcome to the stream. Just walking around places is so fun. It is, but both of our feet and our legs hurt a lot now. Because, again, we did like six miles a day. Which I guess is like ten kilometers. If you're someone who uses that system. Uh, but we were just like walking all over the place. It was a lot of fun, though. It, the first two days were really brutal. Because uh, the heat wave that was going on in the city was just like exacerbated. And it you know, really, um, like, enhanced, I guess, by all the concrete in downtown Toronto and all the glass and stuff. So it was a little humid. It was a little hot. We had to take a couple breaks where we went back to our room and, like, showered off or took, like, a like quick 20-minute nap um, or, like, duck into various businesses for AC. But overall, it was really fun. Uh, since the one of two is beefy, may I kick off good news? Uh, yeah, hey, um, if you guys have good news, drop some in the chat. I haven't gotten to read your good news in a while. Although... I got so emotional while we were on the trip because in the Discord, I think it was Austin asked for good news in the Discord chat. And I wasn't even live, and a lot of you were sharing good news in the chat. That was so cute. But if you are here, you see some good news from other people, please make sure that you're congratulating them and celebrating their good news as well. But yeah, let's do some good news for the first time in like a week. Is Canada more walkable than the U.S.? Some areas, it depends. Um... America is all about the automobile and everyone owning their own car and everything being really spread out. Uh, it, just like any city, though, cities in general are way more walkable. Toronto is an incredibly walkable city, and their public transportation way better than the stuff that I, I deal with here. Um, oh, my God. Whoa. 
Bloody, thank you so, so much. Welcome on in. Don't mind me just rolling. That's so cute. Hello, Raiders. Also, uh, Liz, I'll scroll back up to your good news here in a moment. I gotta pee real bad. Talk to you later. Yes, take care of you, please. Thank you so much for dropping off your Raiders. Hello, hi, everybody. Uh, let me just do a quick welcome in. Yes, if you don't follow my friend Bloody as well, good God. Uh, she is so wonderful. Absolutely incredible. Recently um, moved a lot closer to me, apparently. So hopefully we'll get to hang out in person at some point. Uh, but welcome on in, Raiders. If you're brand new here, hello, hi. My name is Brian, a.k.a. Gerbigli. Um, I am a full-time uh, streamer, YouTuber, voice actor, uh, Korean American, gender fluid. I don't know what what else do I talk about here. Um, I play AAA games all the way down to indies. I open up Pokemon cards. I uh, what what else do I do? I don't know. Cosplay. We we're just talking about. I'm gonna be doing more makeup looks and cosplay very very soon. So very cool stuff. Go Welcome on in. I hope you have a good time if you decide to stick around. And thank you for supporting my friend Bloody. Brittany, what the heck? Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Thank you very, very much for the really, really kind five gifted subs of the community. Thank you. We have everything, Sonos. We kind of do. Um, that was also something chaotic going on in the chat when I was gone. What the heck? Thank you. Jinx Jinx, Absthetic, Snow Lady 5, Shark Isn't Live, and J Peanut Ball. If any of you are here, make sure that you are saying thank you to Brittany. Enjoy the emotes. Enjoy the sub badge. Oh my god, thank you very, very much. Discord was blurst, it was. Let me roll up to some of these uh, good newses here. Um, all right, two posts fr uh, from Liz here. Good news one, I had my biometrics appointment Wednesday so the UK visa office can have a copy of my fingerprints with my face. And while it was uh, like going to the DMV, uh, I'm so glad to have gotten it done. Yes, that's awesome. Uh, the visa process, the sooner you can get those steps done, the better. Yesterday, I, I shipped off the stamp proof of documents, updated biometrics submitted with my passport to hopefully have everything back with my visa decision in three-ish weeks. Yeah, that would be amazing if that uh, resolves that quickly. It's incredible. Love that. Um, thank you again uh, to anyone who's, who's joined in. Don't have good news today, but it's okay to not be okay. Talia, I just want to let you know that uh, part of my good news is that you made it through the week and you're here for the weekend. I, I hope that this stream can help cheer you up and make you feel heard, supported, listened to, whatever uh, you're you're looking to. Uh, we are here for you 100%. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm rolling through some of these good newses. Uh, if you need to report, feel free to report. Finally got my friends together for D&D. It only took us six months, but I'm happy we did because I've been so excited for this for that session. Apollo, that's so fun. It, it's so hard to coordinate D&D, but I'm so glad that you're able to do that. A lot of the people in the community have been doing that really cool to hear about everyone's campaigns uh what's this me being early yo what's up water witch how we doing good news i celebrated my birthday labor day this is the first year i've been uh it's been a convenient time before it was either always on the first day of school or it was the weekend and all my friends were camping few friends actually remember this year alexis happy uh belated birthday i'm so glad to hear that your friends were able to help you celebrate that's wonderful Good news, I qualified for a new income-based uh, repayment play for my student loans so that my uh, payment is $0 a month. Oh my god, Corey, that's the freaking dream. That's incredible. Congrats to you. I know how much that can be a help for people, especially right now. That's awesome. Uh, my good news is that I finally have more time to myself when I'm at home, which is so needed. Love that. Getting a little bit of you time. That's fantastic. Love that. Uh, by the way, if you're new here from the raid, we're doing a segment called Good News, where if you have any good news to share, as long as it's something we can all comfortably enjoy together, feel free to drop it in the chat. I might not be able to read all of it, so I hope that people in chat are, are uh, you know, celebrating each other's good news, congratulating each other, etc. Uh, that's sort of just what we do here to kick off stream uh, during, like, the first hour or so, and then we jump into whatever game I decide to play. Tonight, we're just going to be checking out some of the bonus maps on on power wash as we we talk and catch up and then morgan's gonna go live here um so make sure that you stick around and support her uh my partner for anyone who's new um good news uh i'm officially booked my tickets to england in february 2024 it's for a certain wedding of two wonderful humans oh my god i hope you have so much fun that is so nice Good news, I'm getting a tattoo tomorrow. It'll be my third one. I'm so excited. Beans! That's awesome. That's so, so great. 
I was talking to Morgan while we were in Toronto. We thought about getting tattoos while we were there, but we were like, we don't want to, like, schedule something, you know? We want our time to just be fully for us. Uh, good news, I don't know if I mentioned anywhere here before, but I finally started HRT in early August and been on uh, titty stickers for a whole month now. Hagen, congrats! We love trans news like that. That is incredible. Anything that is affirming to you gender uh, affirmations fantastic freaking huge news love that for you oh my god that's so lovely to hear about love that so so much good news too moonbeam's got a sneak peek of this but i finally put in my two weeks even if i hadn't resolved to do it before i clocked in today today would have uh make made my de made me decide anyway i can't read i'm sorry my health issues flared twice from the heat slash busyness the shift Lead, let me go home two-ish hours early. I'm still not quite recovered, but I'm getting close to giving absolutely no fucks. Liz, I hope that this is just the start of you finding something that fits you better and allows you to have a little bit of time to realign, uh, recover, redirect, whatever you need to do. Congrats to you. That takes a lot of courage. I'm so glad that you're able to do that for yourself, though. Just prioritizing yourself 100%. Good news, a friend and I have been working diligently in Minecraft to build arenas for Hunger Games events this month. Last night was the first one. Everyone seemed to have a good time. Flame Burb, love that! Hunger Games events are so fun. I've gotten to do two of those mods now. They're really cool. Weird good news, I submitted a wage claim form to the Kansas Department of Labor to force my last employer to finally give me my last paycheck and then some causing that asshole all kinds of chaos. Austin, you freaking deserve to do that because fuck that dude. I'm so sorry that you were dealing with that. I'm so, so sorry that you... That the onus falls on you to do all that paperwork, but I really hope that that forces, you know, something, you know, to help you out after a nasty situation like that. And also, yeah, a little bit of karma for that jerk. Good news, my siblings spent the week with me and we climbed a mountain uh, for sunrise. It was super cool. They left yesterday. I missed them, but we had so much fun all week. I love that, Squeebles. That's so fun. Oh my gosh, so, so fun. Good news is I went to a fair with a couple friends. We only went on one ride because they're kind of expensive, but we got air uh, airbrush tattoos, got some good pizza, and then we went to the Korean restaurant and drank this fancy-looking strawberry soju slushy. Ooh, I love a good fruit soju. That's so fun, though. Sounds like a really fun day. Good stuff. You can read. I just can't tell. All good. Gonna take this five to seven weeks to recover and get ready for at least packing everything I want to move over first. Dad suggested helping me do a massive clear-out. When I come back next year, so slightly less work for me this year. Liz, that's wonderful. I'm really happy to know that like you're able to fill your time with a plan. That's excellent. Excellent stuff. Keep you productive. Keep you busy. Keep you working towards that, that stuff that you actually want to accomplish. Good news, I'm a week away from three months at Wally World. Baby Fate turns nine months in two days. That is wild, Fallen. Finally got to spend a little bit of time in customer service as well as help do a carry out of approximately 100 pounds of king size furniture for a really nice older lady yesterday. That's so cool. I'm so glad that you're enjoying your time uh, figuring out like, you know, the different ins and outs of working there. Wild that baby Faye is nine months old though. Holy cow. Absolutely wild. My starter Pokemon named Gerbigly is level 69. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very good. How fitting, honestly. Uh, caught 211 Pokemon in my Scarlet game. Hell yeah. It's a good start on the Pokedex there. I'm excited. I've seen uh, Rocky Horror before, both in a theater and at home, but never with a Shadow cast, so it should be a great time. Wait, for, for what? You're going to see Rocky Horror again? That's so fun. I hope you have a blast. This is the season to see it, for sure. Have a good time. What's a what's a shadow cast, by the way? Maybe maybe I'm old. Maybe it's just been like too long since I've done theater. What's a shadow cast? Please explain. Love to to be edutained on this day, this day of days. Um, let me get uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. let me get the game going, and we can keep chatting. Here we go. Like I said, we're just doing some more power wash tonight. We got, uh, you know, some of the, some of the bonus maps um, that I've never done before. I'm so sad the campaign's over. I got emotional when it ended. If you weren't here for the uh, the end of the campaign, the end of that big temple. But what a what a worthwhile game to play. Very excited for all the DLC they're going to be putting out as well. 
I'm not ready for him to be one. He's got eight teeth and he's crawling. Oh my gosh. Oh, following. It's going to come at you fast, you know? Yay, Power Watch. Yeah, just, just chill night back before Morgan goes live because I'm not going to be live very long tonight. This is just a good recovery chill day. I'm probably going to do an early stream tomorrow as well. Uh, and then it's going to be business as usual with the upcoming week here. I don't think I'll be able to keep up with him when he figures out how to run. Got to start planning now. You got to do do um do some like marathon training now. <laughs> got a ticket for Rocky Horror that has uh Barry Bostick, Bostwick, who played the original Brad. Shadowcast is like because the movie is interactive, so while it goes there, will be major audience interaction. Oh, that's so fun! Have a blast. Have an absolute blast. Yay, Morgan. Yeah, she's very excited to see everyone again on her stream. But for me, nothing nothing crazy planned tonight. I want to start this upcoming week. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I think one of the things I'm going to do is uh, start another story-based game. Because I had so much fun with Little Misfortune. Um, I might do the game Coffee Talk. Because that was a game I was originally going to do on my YouTube ages ago. I played the demo. People like that a lot. Um, but since then, I never did the full playthrough of the main game. Uh, Coffee Talk 2 was sent to me as well. Uh, and I've heard really good things about those games. They're sort of like visual novel. Whoa, what is this washer I have? The Urban X? What the heck is this thing? Whoa. That's fancy. Holy crap. That's really neat. Oh, that is nice, actually. It's like a super heavy-duty... This is the 50 cal sniper rifle washer. This is wild. Outer wall decoration. Oh, it's like really icy. It's really, really jammed on there. Not anymore. There we go. Very nice. Story-based game. Mayhaps a game about a gate owned by Balder. <laughs> Maybe eventually. I don't know. I, I'm kind of scared of Balder's gate. I know it's going to eat my life whenever I start to play it. I also have to reach out to Larian Studios and, and get a code from them. I forgot to do that. The Urban X 5000, right? Like, what is this thing? Dang. Just realize how old Rocky Horror is. Yeah, it's been around forever. It's iconic, though, you know? Uh, older than my mom? Holy cow. I missed uh, Not So Late Night Gang and the Moonbeam so much this last week. Well, it's great to be back. I can't wait to do more with everybody. Um, if you all missed this, I did make this announcement over on the Discord. But uh, I was thinking about it, and I was like, man, people are really busy normally Friday. I know a lot of people get, like, exhausted um, after, like, their work day on Friday, uh, after just a long week. They want their Friday nights to themselves. Um, so one of the things that I'm going to be changing about the schedule is you guys are going to get earlier, like, you know, streams on Saturday instead of Friday. I'm probably not going to stream on Fridays. There's, like, a lot of other streamers that do big events and stuff. Um, Fridays just haven't been great as far as, like, turnout. Like, people are busy, which is fine. I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad about having to miss things. You have real lives. You have other priorities, etc. So don't feel bad about that. But I want to make sure that the streams are convenient for as many people as possible. I feel like a lot of people, uh, you know, miss out on those Friday streams because other, other streamers are doing stuff. And, uh, again, everyone's just exhausted after the work week comes to an end. Um, so, Fridays are no longer going to be stream days. I'm probably going to work on YouTube videos uh, and work on other projects on Friday nights. And then Saturday, early evening, or, I mean, uh, like, late evening, early night. Like, this time slot, kind of. I will be doing streams instead. But that means also I can, like, work on YouTube videos a lot on Friday. So my YouTube channel will have, like, a bigger output. I've been doing a lot of short-form content. If you guys haven't seen... I did I did a stupid video um, where, yeah, Friday's a busy day. Yeah, also I want to make sure that the time slots are easier for our European pals and other time zone pals to make. 
So a Friday night stream or a Friday night stream is never allowed for that. Saturday streams could. So I think that that's the plan. Is like Saturday will be like the earlier time slot stream. So like more people from like Europe can join the streams. Um, and again, like the community hasn't really been growing recently. You know, like I've been my follower count, sub count, stuff like that. It's not the most important thing to me, but also it's like obviously I need to make sure that I'm preserving my own future as a creator. So um, giving a little bit more variety with like a time slot start will help me out a lot as a creator and maybe get some new faces here. Maybe get new followers, uh, invigorate the community during like that earlier in the day where people have like a little bit more energy um, to like participate more and like be excited for things again. So I think that that's something that I want to do. Uh, and those of you who supported that over on the Discord, thank you. That's really, really nice of you. But I wanted to make that as uh, transparent as possible for people. Um, do what you need to. We'll be there. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's really nice of you to say. Everyone was really nice about it over on the Discord for sure. So thank you, everybody, uh, who thinks that's an okay idea. Um, but yeah, that is uh, the current plan. Thank you for any feedback that was left on the Discord about it already. Thank you, Talia, for commenting on it as well in the chat here. Um, outside of that, if you guys didn't see, I, I put up a fucking video. It's a random-ass video on TikTok and Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts. And it really took off. Of We were in the Airbnb, and I'd never seen one of those trash cans with, like, the whole, like... Instead of it just being a one single piece of a lid that just lifts up. Um, instead of that, it like opened in the middle, like like, like a gate. I, I'd never seen one of those. So I just made like a silly little quick video about that. It has like 250,000 views on Instagram Reels. I don't know why. It didn't do that well on like YouTube Shorts. It didn't do that well on TikTok. But on Instagram Reels, 250,000 views. It definitely fell outside the target demographic. So <laughs> that was a big surprise while we were away. Because I was like, oh, yeah, I'll make some like short form content. And then like a bunch of my other videos are starting to hit the like five digits worth of views and stuff. Uh, so I'm definitely going to be putting a lot more time into short form content soon. I already got one in my drafts for tomorrow that has to do with voice acting. I hope that people like. But it was it was very intense to see that. The Pac-Man trash can? Yeah, that. Uh, my family had some of those? Yeah, I'd never seen one like that before. Spyro got me feeling old. Oh, yeah, it's the 25th uh, anniversary. Spyro, the dragon. I, I love that series. That was one of my favorite PS1 games. Whenever I'm able to catch one of your streams, I get super excited. I've been working a lot trying to move out and figure out how to adult. So I don't have as much free time as I did before. Alexis, completely understandable. So sorry you can't catch the streams as much, but please know. Um, you know, me working through my schedule, trying to make changes to it to make it a little bit more convenient for people is for people like you. Um, also, making sure that, you know, I'm getting those VODs up on the YouTube channel, which uh, I believe Michael Mouse releases my YouTube VOD channel in like five days or something. And then those uploads are going to continue. Those will always be there. Um, the end took me out. Max, I'm glad. Is the only... Uh, <laughs> the trash can and Joe's were fed that day. Like, truly, though. But, like, that's the only part there was, like, an actual joke in that video. But that was very, very funny. Um, but, yeah, if you guys don't know, I've been putting up a shit ton of short forms. So, definitely go check that out. Follow me on, like, TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube Shorts. If you don't follow me on YouTube... Instagram or TikTok, now is your call to action to do so because there's lots and lots of content that's going to be coming up because of short form freedom that I have. So, my kid was five. Uh, he got mad at me because I wouldn't let him get a tattoo of Spyro on his forehead. That's so funny. That's so cute, though. Oh my god. Take your meds. Yes, take your meds, everybody. But that is. Uh, currently where I've been putting a lot of my time and like I'm one of those people who I've been doing this so long you know numbers haven't really mattered to me very much but at the same time I want to make sure that my time is being valued and where I'm putting it is uh, having 
having the type of like career payout I needed to not necessarily money but just like people are into what I'm doing and a lot of the times I feel like when I stream on Fridays again everyone's like super tired no one really wants to participate in chat or even cares about what I'm talking about those of you who do thank you by the way I really appreciate that a lot but like you know I stream so late on Fridays people just like fall asleep which is fine totally understandable you worked hard I just ramble about whatever. But I was like, yeah, I'm going to be getting rid of Friday streams. And we're going to be moving it to Saturday so there's a little bit more variety for people who might have funky work schedules or uh, life events or they're just in a different time zone. People will be able to make Saturday streams more often, I think, and just, like, be able to participate in stuff. That makes sense. So all these things are going on in the channel. Just trying to do my best to stay transparent, give you guys updates about what I'm up to and... Uh, what you can look forward to. And in the meantime, we'll be starting up some story-based games here on Twitch. So, I hope that that makes sense. I hope that that's okay for everybody. So, <laughs> if you have any comments, questions, concerns, even affirmations, it would be nice to see some in the chat. Outside of that, um, yeah. You're just going to have... You don't really have a choice in what's going to be happening. Because uh, I don't want every stream to turn into no one giving a shit, you know? Finn NPC, hello, hi, welcome to the stream. Good to see you here. I think it's a good call. Thank you. Thank you, Austin. Yeah, I, I, listen, as a fellow creator, I'm sure you're like, this resonates a lot. How dare you try to make things better? Elian, hello, hi. Whatever makes you happy? Thank you, Finn. That's nice of you to say. I, I, here's the thing, though, is it, it everything kind of makes me happy. I have fun doing whatever I do. I want to make sure that the community gives a shit, though. You know, that's the way that I look at it is like if I'm talking about stuff and literally every message from everyone in chat is just off topic has fucking nothing to do with what I'm saying. I'm like, cool, I'm boring. No one gives a shit about what I'm up to or what I'm talking about or what I want to put back into the community. And that sucks when that happens sometimes. I I am fine with it to a degree because I'm like, we all have ADHD here and I'm cool with people talking to each other. But when I'm like, yo, uh, I need community feedback on this. And like two people reply. I'm like, all right, cool. Well, fuck you guys too then. I'm going to do what I want to do. Uh, and if it suddenly turns you off from the community and you don't feel like coming around again, that's kind of not my fault. I gave you the option to give feedback and whatever. So that that's kind of where I'm at with content. Uh, and it's why like Friday streams just like weren't working for me anymore, partially. But mainly it's also to just add some variety to the schedule. So, uh, we do everything all at once. <laughs> Saturday stream sounds so much fun. It's not like a very busy day for me at least. So it's nice to be able to vibe with y'all. Okay. Awesome. 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 See, that's the kind of thing I want to hear more of. I want people's like honesty about shit. I've noticed the last year or two that Friday nights are always the lowest view count for myself and others, unless it's some group event. Right. And that's the other thing too. I think it's like. It's like I never see myself as having to compete with people. That's like not what it is. But there is like a level of like, oh, like, you know, Jario Night is going on then. Like, I would rather watch Jario Night on Fridays. I don't want to have people here watching me play the same shit over and over again. I want to watch Jario on Friday nights. So Friday, I've decided that's going to be a work night for me to work on like video content, short form content. And then I get to watch Jario. I get to watch my pals do Jario. There's, like, a lot of events on Fridays. So I think, like, Saturdays are better. Promise you you're not boring. I just have anxiety. I'm introverted. No, that is absolutely fine as well. And that's not to, like, call out specific people or, like, make people feel bad or pressure them into talking. It's more of, like, a, I always get that vibe on Fridays. I'll be, like, talking about something. I'll be like, hey, guys, I'm thinking about putting out, like, a new merch hat. Would that be cool? And then Fridays, like, you know, like, the four or five people who are regulars in the chat will be like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And I'll be like, cool. I'm really appreciative of your feedback. And then everyone else is just like, oh, sorry. I was watching like 18 other streams in the background. I didn't really give a shit about you, Brian. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I guess I won't put out a fucking merch hat then. You know? My problem is Sunday through Thursday nights are a no for me because of work. I get so uh, sad I can't be around for all my favorite streamers because I only have two nights to watch and can't fit everything in. I, that is understandable, but that's like that's like going to be my regular schedule, I think, for Sunday through Friday or Thursday. Um, but that's also why the VODs are there for people like you, Finn. I'm so sorry that you can't make it all the time. 
But I think, like, Saturday and Sunday streams, like, doing slightly earlier ones might be kind of good for my brain as well. Like, daytime brain for people. Get really tired Friday nights. Yeah, that's the other thing. So that's the kind of feedback I want, Talia. I love that. Is Friday nights, I think people just, like, pass out. Which is understandable. You guys work fucking hard. You work so hard. Um, so Friday nights, if people are like, yeah, I'm really, really tired. I, I can't, like, participate or, like, I can't even make streams Fridays. I'm like, yeah, okay. That makes so much sense. That's that's a day that should be for you. That's your, like, cool, like, that should be, like, a good recovery day. Where you're like, oh, my God, I worked my ass off. Now I want to just, like, rest, watch, like, you know, streaming or whatever. Not, like, Twitch streaming, but, like, watch, like, my TV shows or movies or whatever. Catch up on, like, some good takeout. I've canceled my own streams to watch Neatude events and Paranormal Detours. Yeah, no, totally understandable. Um... I forget about VODs every time. <laughs> Those will be there for you always. Always. Weekend streams kind of feel like the brunch of the week. World's most coherent Sunday. No, Apollo, that makes sense, though. I get that vibe, too. Going on just vibes alone, that makes a lot of sense. And like I said, I'm not here to baby glove people anymore. That's, like, not what I want to do because that doesn't ever have any sort of results. Um, so it's, like, and it doesn't get people to participate. So, like... Me d doing this is not to make anyone in chat feel bad. It's not to make the community feel bad. This is for you guys. This is for you. This is for the community. This is so that the community feels like something that is, like, tailored to your tastes, your preferences. And also, even if it's not, it's something that I'm transparently communicating and directly communicating with the reasons as to why I'm doing it a certain way. So I hope that, like, people aren't taking offense to this. This is just something that, like, me and a lot of other creators have been voicing a lot recently. Like, Chris. Like, Chris Melberger was talking about this the other day. He was like, man, it always kind of bumps me out when I'm streaming. And then I start playing a game, and, like, half my viewership, like, fucks off and does not give a shit about me. Um, and I'm like, yeah. And obviously, like, a lot of that's just, like, in our heads. But we also want to make sure we're making the content that you decided to hang out in the community for to begin with. If that makes sense. So... That's why these conversations are for you guys as well. Usually fall asleep to Brian. Nettles, that's totally understand. And that's the thing is I understand that that's what happens, especially on Fridays when people are exhausted. So this is for you guys. This is to help you all out. That's the shift. That's the change. Uh, one time I was falling asleep, saw I went live, came in, resubbed, fell asleep before I could think Brian. <laughs> think Brian saw it. That happens. It does. Appreciate your transparency. Yeah, because, like, why would I talk to you guys? Why would I be like, all right, Chad, I'm going to pander and be, like, fucking, like, everything's fine. It's okay that, like, you know, Fridays my view count goes, like, lower than it has in, like, five years. I'm I'm, I'm here to, to tell people what my thoughts are and include you in the process of, like, making it work for all of us. You know? So, you can stare at the screen, do nothing. I would still be here. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you, Sarah. You cannot get rid of me. <laughs> uh, I'm here for any vibes you decide to send out, to be honest. It's always so much fun. I'm glad to hear that. I'm, I'm glad that me trying something, because I take it, the way I take that is like, this is going to be me trying like a different schedule. Um, maybe putting more of my time into like short form and YouTube where I'm growing the community versus like streams are kind of just for the people who are already in the community. I can't remember the last time I've had a, like a big follower blow up on twitch and uh it's depressing to be like all right cool it's sub tip let's grind for those subs everybody oh man it's the only way i'll be able to make rent let's do 18 subathons i don't want to do that that, that kind of shit is what's always made me like lose my passion for streaming over the years um or like making content over the years is like the money and the number shit so if it's like, oh yeah, Brian is not doing Friday streams anymore and instead it like shifted those to Saturday because like view count is better or like people are just able to be around more and like people are having more fun in chat. I'd rather have that. Like tonight's been great. This has been a great welcome back to like vibe with everyone and chat with those of you who are here. Um, and I don't, again, I don't want to like pressure people into wanting to talk because that's in my opinion really toxic, especially if you have like anxiety because I know what that's like. That sucks. Um, but it's also like I want it to feel like a comfortable atmosphere where if you do decide to talk, uh, it's something that you're enthusiastic about doing or, um, you know, you find like whatever we're doing interesting or funny. 
And that's just the type of streamer I want to be. Toxic streamer considers the feelings and schedules of his Twitch viewers. <laughs> Shaking my head, my head. Oh my god. Uh, in all fairness, I get it. You don't want to tie yourself uh, worth the numbers and you try desperately not to, but then you see the numbers go down right in front of you and you're like, ha, I'm in danger. Yeah, and again, it's not even like, a, oh man, you guys got to do more. Where's the sub bombs? Why don't we have more people fucking subbing during September? It's nothing like that. It's more of like, a, I always bring it back to myself where I'm like, cool, we were just like having this really enthusiastic chat in, uh, you, you know, in, in the chat. And then uh, I started talking about this thing I'm enthusiastic about and no one gives a shit. Wow, I must suck and be boring and I'm the worst person in the world. That's always where it comes back to. It's never like, oh, I fucking hate this community. I can't believe these fucking people are getting free content and they're not even participating. What, what, what do I need to do to parasocially like convince them to be like my super fans? Like, I don't want to fucking do that. That's so stupid. I see so many people fall into that to like just keep their numbers up. I, that would kill me on the inside. I would rather eat a handful of glass than fucking do that to, like, make my content relevant. That's just so dumb to, like, fake that, you know? Like, I don't, I do not want it to be like that. So, when I ask for feedback, you guys aren't going to hurt my feelings if I'm, like, asking for your feedback. I want your feedback. I want to be real with all of you as much as I can. I want you to be real with me, you know? And also, thank you for the chickens! Nettles, what the heck? I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Did someone say donut link? I don't think so, and they shouldn't. Okay? Thank you so much, though. What the heck? Um, I wish Twitch didn't make y'all do th subathons and just paid you livable wages, right? That would also... And that's the thing is... That's why I'm never going to bring it back on the community. It's always going to be... Like, at the end of the day, the platforms that we make content for are the true issues. But it's like I've always said. Even if I ever have to go back to having, like, a job again, I'm still going to be making content on the side because I love to make content. But I want to make sure that it's ideal timing for you. I want to make sure that it's ideal type of content that you like watching, that you like vibing with. That's the shit that's important to me. That's the stuff that, like, means the most to me. So I hope that, that this whole rant has made sense. Um, I'm enthusiastic about your enthusiasm. <laughs> and like I said, it's not even just me. It's like, you know, like I, I saw Chris make a tweet about it the other day. I, I've seen a bunch of, like, people who make content making these tweets where they're like, I just feel like I, I must be really boring to my, my community. I, I feel like people just, like, don't care about me. And they're like, I know that a little bit of that is just being a creative. You're always going to feel that way. But I want to make sure that that's not the reality as well. So if you guys ever have, like, feedback about content here that you want to see, about stuff that, like, you know, works better for the community as a whole... You know, I want you to be transparent and raw. We're, we're adults here. We're not fucking babies. You're not boring. I find your streams so comforting. I can fall asleep to them when I'm exhausted. That's how wholesomely blurs this community is. Well, thank you, Tal. And that's the kind of that's the kind of feedback that gives me, like, a little bit more confidence that what I'm doing makes sense and is, like, what the community really wants. Um, so thank you. That was really nice of you to say. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Natal's what the hell. Just know that if I'm not lovingly harassing you in chat, then I must sleep. Yeah, and that's that's the other thing, too, is, like, I want this to be a place where people are like, oh, it feels chill to fall asleep here. But I also don't want to do, like, a Friday stream where, like, everyone's already asleep. You know? <laughs> if that makes sense. So that is why, like, Friday streams, they're, they're, going, they're going out to pasture. They're gone. This will forever be the first community online I ever bonded with to this extent. I'm glad to hear that you feel that way about about this community. Like, genuinely. Um, so anyway, that was a long ramble aside. I hope that all of that makes sense. I just want to make sure that, like... The, the thing that scares me more than, like, criticism as feedback is indifference. And, like, people being like... Oh, Brian's changing his schedule. I, I don't I literally don't give a shit. This is boring stuff to talk about. Uh whatever. Fucking make content, silly streamer person. Like that that would that would bug me way more than people being like, oh that's good. Or like, oh yeah, I I guess. It's bad. Here's why. You know. Um Your streams are always so lovely and welcoming. It kind of feels like a cozy sleepover, but it's 3 a.m. and we're delirious. <laughs> I like that description. 
I love just chilling and vibing here. It's so wholesome and also chaotic and unhinged. Like, honestly, this community is, like, the one I feel I can be awake to interact. Wait, I just read two different messages. I can truly be myself, you know? I, Nettles, I'm glad because, like I said, the whole reason I started making content was I never really felt like I belonged when I was, like, growing up in a lot of communities. And knowing that people get that vibe here makes me really, really happy. Some scary things happening in my life to uh, feel uh, comfortable enough to sleep is... Wait, to feel comfort enough to sleep is a blessing to me. Thank you for that. Love to be awake to interact too, though. Yeah, and again, I don't... I, if you are like, I just want to tuck in with my PJs and a nice comfy blanket and a warm mug of hot cocoa and fall asleep through the stream, I want you to be able to do that. I, want, I do not want people to feel forced to interact. But at the same time, it's like I'm always like telling people, I'm like, this is for you. So, like, if it sounds good, at least, like, let me know that much. So that I know that we're on the right path together. Because this is not just for me. This is also for all of you. Kind of thing. Um, I'm so sorry you're going through all that, by the way, Talia. We are here for you, for sure. <laughs> it's sometimes uh, unhinged. <laughs> hey, Green. Amy, hello. Hi. Can't say long. I'm about to clock into work. Well, I hope that work goes well. Thank you so much for dropping by to say hi. It's one of the best places to just hang out after a long day slash week. Even the chaos helps. Corey, I'm glad to hear that again. I think that, yeah, again, the big issue I felt from Friday streams is everyone is so tired. I remember looking at the clock every 30 seconds when I was on my Friday shifts, back when I had like a regular full-time job, being like, I cannot wait until I get to go home. I'm going to go home. I'm going to get some, like, takeout pizza. I'm going to kick off my freaking shoes and work clothes. And I'm just going to vibe, eating pizza, playing video games, watching movies with Morgan. And, like, shut out the outside world. And I feel like a lot of you guys do that. And I, again, can completely understand that feeling. So, like, being like, okay, I'm going to give Friday to the community. And to my, also work on the stuff that's making me really happy right now. Which is video content and short form stuff and voice acting stuff do that and then saturdays we can all vibe and you guys can tell me about your your weeks you know friday streams are the equivalent of brian reading chat bedtime stories <laughs> yeah and again that's the thing like i kind of want to avoid that just to like i want it to always feel like a nice place to chill and fall asleep and and have your moment of just peace but also it's like the number of people who are like, Brian, play Little Misfortune. Oh my God, I'm so excited for you to play Little Misfortune. And then I think we played that on a Friday. I can't remember when I played it. But I played it like, and like maybe half the people who really wanted me to play it showed up to that stream. And I was like, oh, okay, I, this is probably a timing thing. This is definitely like a timing thing. So I want to like avoid that when I can. People were like probably too tired to show up to that or whatever, you know? Have that feeling every workday, Corey. I I understand. I'm so sorry. I work only part time, and I'm always just uh, be there. Like when 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 does my shift end? Totally understandable. I didn't expect you to beat it in one stream. That was kind of baller of me. That was very gamer of me. That is true. I missed that stream. I was so sad. Well, whenever Michael Mouse releases my channel on YouTube, the VOD channel on YouTube, I'll be able to put it up eventually. I think I'm like a month behind on VOD uploads now. So I'm, I caught up and now I'm, thanks to Michael, I'm now again a full month behind on VOD uploads. But that's okay. I'll catch up again. I was so sad. I fell asleep during Little Misfortune. Oh no! It was a really fun game. Thank you to everyone who recommended it, though. Thank you very, very much. That was a really, really fun stream. Anyway, that is my long rant of this stream. We may move on with our business. Again, I hope no one felt bad for my, my rambling. That wasn't the intention. This is not to blame the community. It's more of a, like, hey, I got to do what's best for me. You guys are going to enjoy the, the content, hopefully, whenever. I didn't have anyone protest me moving Fridays to Saturday. So I'm going to assume, based on the current community feedback, that things are going to actually be better if I stream on Saturdays. So thank you. Thank you for helping me figure that all out. All of you are great. What's the Michael Mouse? Uh, Mickey Mouse. Like Disney. Disney is currently holding up my VOD channel with a 
erroneous copyright strike. Um, and once they clear it, which they only have, I believe, like five more days to either deny or clear it. And if they wait those five days, I think it just auto clears for me. Um, then I'll be able to upload my, my VODs on that YouTube channel again. But I'm waiting for that to clear because otherwise that VOD is fully blocked. I like when you keep it real. Hey, I've been doing this such a long time. And it's like I said, speaking of Michael Mouse, speaking of Disney, um, I Disney needs to chill. They always have needed to chill. <laughs> uh, I did the, I, I used to be, you know, Polaris. Disney Digital was like a, a network back in the day. And they were like kind of scouting me. They were trying to see if I was a good fit for them. And I was like a very like, Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm a content-ready, traditional-style YouTuber and Twitch streamer, and oh boy, I'm gonna pander to the audience a little bit. I was still myself, but I was, like, very much like, oh, we're not gonna talk about the bad stuff. We're gonna talk about only the good stuff right now kind of streamer. I don't want to do that. I don't want to I don't want to pretend everything's, like, good all the time. I don't want to dwell on the bad shit, but, like, if I want to talk about, like, a really real thing... Like I said, treat you all as adults. I'm going to treat you like adults. I'm not going to insult your intelligence by always baby-gloving and downplaying things. If that makes sense. Good news repost because I want the attention of the parasocial streamer. Uh, I applied to a Twitch team focused around fundraising. Applied to be an Ash mod. I got confirmation I'm eligible to sit my exam on October 30th. And then I become a full-fledged adult. Sarah, congrats to all that good news. That's fantastic. Very cool to hear. Making some moves there. It's like I'm missing something. Nettle's all good. It's like a, a silly internet, like, colloquialism at this point. I had to fight a claim for a song that wasn't even in the VOD not that long ago. Yeah, YouTube's claim system is still very flawed. I will let you know as someone who's been a, uh, a YouTuber for a very long time. The, the system is better than it used to be, but it still is incredibly flawed. And we've been working really hard to try to get YouTube to fix it, make it safer for creators, and also rights holders, you know? You're keeping it real, Brian, and you're honest with us? I'm, I'm doing my best to be honest with everyone I can be, you know? So, my mom puts on cartoons for her dogs, and I've come to see through bits and pieces. Mr. Mouse is way too much, uh, too many properties. He has his clubhouse, now a fun house, not to mention has a million theme parks. Yeah, and and streaming services and everything in between. You know? Disney owns way more than people realize. There is a lot of companies that are owned by Disney behind the scenes. <laughs> but anyway, thank you again everybody for listening to my uh, my full transparency. It's what I plan on doing with all my content. You know, you guys have seen the tweets where I just, like, go off on a rant about shit I'm unhappy about or critical of. Uh, YouTube videos have been very transparent. You know, I, me, even, like, five years ago, would never have made a video where I talked about, like, my PTSD publicly. And then I did that on my YouTube channel, and everyone was amazingly supportive. So, I just the type of person I want to be. I don't want to be a creator that just sells you guys shit. Like a false reality of toxic positivity. I want to be a person to you. I just want to be a human being and let you know that anything's possible for regular people because I'm a regular person. The mouse is starting to lose some of his grip. Winnie the Pooh, for example. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Winnie the Pooh, the traditional story is is uh, public domain now, but um, the Disney-fied version is still under their control. Which is uh, where, you know, copyright law and stuff, it's kind of dicey and ca uh, complicated, you know? Uh, <laughs> Michael's the slummiest landlord around these parts? Kinda. Other good vague news, I started therapy last week and it's going well. Um, it's like, wait, it's like, uh, why didn't I do this sooner? Nettles, I'll let you know that when I first started therapy, I felt the same way, but... You know, healing is not linear. Whenever you feel comfortable enough to start it is the right time. I'm so proud of you for taking that step, though. That's incredible. Brian's openness helped push me to do it? Oh, my God. I'm so glad. Funniest claim I've had. Someone tried to claim a Glassland song, copyright-free, 
Um, yeah, that sounds about right. That's, that's just YouTube for you. People will, like, try to claim covers and shit. It's really weird. Uh, very true. I'm just glad they can't monopolize fairy tales forever. Right. I mean, unfortunately, copyright law has been rewritten multiple times exclusively for Disney. So there are some things that are in their roster that, under the old laws, would have been public domain by now. But then corporate law was like, oh, they make so much money and they've fed us so much of it under the table and lobbied and shit that we're going to let them, like, uphold this copyright, even though theoretically it wouldn't work for any other company to do this. So there is a chance that some fairy tales may forever be in the grip, or at least some renditions of fairy tales will forever be in the grip of Disney. Some characters and whatnot. But we'll see. We're, a lot more people are becoming aware of it, and we're fighting against it, fortunately. Like, publicly. That's the hope. Exclusively for Disney. Yeah, isn't it wild? Speaking of good copyright news, Johnson & Johnson allowed for the patent of a, a betaquiline to expire, so now uh, generic generics can be made? Can help cure TB? Yo, that's huge news. All medicine should not be privatized. That's my take. Everything should be allowed to be very cheaply and generically made to save as many lives as possible, especially like things like diabetic, like diabetes medicine. I have so many friends who are diabetic who are like, yeah, I, I have to pay like $700 a month for it or I die. And, like, that should just be a generic medicine that costs you, like, $10. Well, you agree? Therapy's uh, best started when a person feels ready. If you try to force it, you and the therapist will both know you're not into it. Nothing's meant to be done whenever someone's ready. Even if you feel behind, you're not. Exactly. There's no time limit to when you work on yourself and when you see results from working on yourself. 100% on that one. Finally, back with my coffee. Cup of sun, welcome back. Johnson, Johnson, thank you for letting that patent expire because everyone deserves access to medicine. Yeah, for real, though. We did have to bully them, though. It's quite fun. We're always going to have to bully corporations, but I'm so glad to see that, like, that's becoming a regular, normalized thing. Like, public opinion, public pressure on these, like, big multi-billion dollar, multi-million dollar companies to, like, you know fucking work for the people not against them it needs to happen way more that's all i'm gonna say but it's nice to see that with the awareness the internet brings for things and uh the amount of like information that we've been able to share with people over the years of the internet it's becoming so much more popularized to do that kind of thing and and help each other you know we're like helping each other Patent for insulin was supposed to be given away for free as per the creators from Canada. U.S. always ruining things. Yep. Yep. It's sad. Time to bully the mouse. They're a company that unfortunately, I don't think, I think that they have more money than God. So unfortunately, it's going to be really hard to get them out of the little trench that they've dug in all walks of life. Um, like Disney owns like whole towns. I don't think that regardless of what the public opinion of them is, they're ever going to be in a spot where they're like, okay, we're going bankrupt. We need to change how things are done. Kind of sucks. It's like one of those like too much money to care scenarios. But I think that we can do that to a lot of other companies out there. Gonna lurk. Bath night for Baby Faye. Oh, I hope Baby Faye has a wonderful bath. <laughs> Throwing pebbles at that mouse back off, Michael. Yeah, get the heck out of here, Mike. I didn't say we had to get them out of the trench. We just bury them. <laughs> the problem is, is again, they have like such a death grip on so many industries. It's like everyone in the whole, like if everyone from my communities, like, you know, you can bind all my followers, hundreds of thousands. You can bind all my friends followers, like, you know, millions of people. And we all boycotted Disney. There'd still be enough people out there buying their products that they would they go, okay, that sucked financially for a little bit, but we can stay afloat. We're just going to make our products even cheaper for us to make, um, but we're we're going to make money in the, in the difference. We're going to still make profit. That's just the way that so many of those mega corporations work. It sucks. It's very hard to break that. 
and they kind of know that you know they buy they they buy the uh the analysts and financial strategists who will tell them yeah that's how it will work out and they go mm, we feel confident doing this then doesn't matter that there were these like 15 publications that were like our ceo is the most out of touch idiot in the world we're still gonna get away with doing this it, it sucks you know but in the meantime we got to keep trying right medication for diabetes and insulin and equipment in canada is unfortunately also sometimes not wholly covered because wild insulin pumps and continuous monitors for example are so important for all with uh, type 1 diabetes some with type 2 yeah absolutely he only likes her because we're she's old. She's we're not making enough strides yet but we are making some strides i will say this much things are are changing in a lot of industries out there we talk about this all the time i feel like there's a lot of things changing they're not changing fast enough but we got to celebrate the progress that we are making fortunately mars what's up 74 freaking months thank you so much appreciate that a lot hope you're doing well hope someone shits in bob Iger's left shoe and his right one <laughs> yeah the both of them absolutely disney will never not get loads of money right yeah you guys I, i'm sure some of you like don't even realize some of the stuff you buy is owned by companies that disney owns it's just the way that it is it sucks but it just be that way we just got to keep up the good fight whenever we can you know no ethical consumption under capitalism to a degree just be aware of the nuances of that and uh you know vote spread the word spread awareness just be a good just be a good person you don't even have to be like loud all the time you just have to be a good person who thinks ethically about things whenever you can small changes are better than none yeah Viva La Resistance. Oh, my God. Uh, someone mentioned Bath, which made me think of this. Onyx apparently part dog. She got lots of outside time today. Decided to roll and dig in the dirt and now needs a bath. Onyx, what are you doing? Oh, my God. Sort of like how Sig wags his tail and barks. He's part dog. We got dog cats, Corey. <laughs> Yo, what's up, great lady? Hello. Hi. Welcome to the stream. Doing a bit of chit chat. Was catching uh, everyone up on my trip to Toronto. Getting some uh, power washing in. Telling people about how the schedule is going to be changing to Saturday early streams for me. And then Fridays I'm going to be taking to uh, work on video content moving forward. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. Can we get some happy birthdays for Grey Lady in the chat? Happy birthday. Hope you had a really good one. Thank you for sharing part of your birthday with us. Some cats are puppy and some puppy are cat. So true. It's like the, the show being puppy cat. When Mark stated fuck Nestle during an Unisonis video, I whooped loudly. Steps in the correct direction is still progress. Yeah. Absolutely. But here's the other thing too. It's like, I, I always see like, you know, we, we've gotten so like performative about a lot of things where people go after the wrong thing a lot of the times at the end of the day you know it's the the corporations that are like the evil crappy things that are perpetuating like wealth imbalance and poor working conditions for workers and poor benefits and everything like that um and sustaining like you know inhumane conditions whatever but then you'll see like people dogpile someone for like buying like a nestle like candy bar where it's like okay that person just wanted a little treat after like a hard work week it's not like they just bought like ten thousand dollars of nestle stock they bought like a candy bar but then you'll see that because it's so easy people who are like performative in their activism always go after those people first because it's like ground floor they don't really have to get into like the main meat and potatoes of what's wrong with the corporation they get to just attack someone's action that like is bad and i'm not saying go out there and just oh yeah don't give a shit about what you're consuming and like you know <laughs> give problematic companies money or anything like that but like if you eat like a candy bar i don't want to see people like dogpiling that person um at the end of the day the end message should still be this corporation fucking sucks sucks that you used a little bit of your money to support them but like you know that like two dollars is not going to to change how they operate go after the corporation not the consumers trying to survive right exactly same same thing we talk about with like 
you know, no ethical consumption under consumerism to a degree, under capitalism to a degree. There's limits, obviously. Like I said, don't be out there buying, like, 10 Teslas. You know, don't be buying, like, a shit ton of Nestle stock or something. Find a hill to die on. It's not the dude who bought a chocolate bar. Right. Um, it's the same with the corporations and recycling. They made us point fingers at each other. Right. You know, Nettles, it's so funny you said that because Morgan and I were talking about that today. It Because it's like, it's so cool in Canada. They have like recycling bins everywhere, like in public places. Not necessarily like outside, but like almost any establishment with food. You can just recycle things right there. And I was like, Wow, this is so cool. I love that I can, like, recycle stuff in every business that I'm I'm in. That's really neat. I like that Canada does that. And then Morgan and I had our, our long talk about it sucks because it's like, yeah, I, I, I uh, recycled that plastic bottle that I just had my drink out of. But also, the big problem is, is that company that makes that drink puts everything in the, millions of those plastic bottles they're the ones who are paying the petroleum companies to produce millions of plastic bottles a year but then they're like oh but you're the bad ones for not recycling like you should obviously always try to do your part but me recycling for my entire lifetime is not gonna you know like or like me not recycling my entire lifetime is not gonna produce like a month's worth of environmental issues that like a major corporation would like, I'm going to always do my part. I'm always going to do my best to, like, recycle and shit like that. But that corporation is the one that has, like, holy shit. They've, they've created all this plastic one-time use waste. Which is awful. You hate that. My sister-in-law's dad actually is part of the Recycle Everywhere team. Nice. Uh, Funky Fresh News. We have three types of garbage. Actual garbage recycling and what we call green bin, which is compostable. Yeah, I saw that. It's so many places I went to. I love that. Or you can, like, throw away paper products uh, to be composted. Or, like, food. My city also has compost now. Love that. Yeah. That was all over the place in Toronto. When all the plastic straw stuff happened and it made me so mad, like, some people need those and shouldn't feel shame for it. Right. Yeah, Morgan and I were talking about that today. About, like, everywhere we went in Toronto has paper straws, which it's, like, that's cool. But, like, it is a little bit inaccessible. The people who do need those plastic straws, especially, like, the reusable types and whatever um and like that change to plat to paper straws is probably not creating as big of an en environmental impact as like um us not using styrofoam takeout containers anymore or something like that right and a lot of places in gta in the gta they take uh recycling and compost out weekly but garbage only every two weeks interesting i did not know that and plastic straws is an issue, yes, but they're a major part of the ocean, human, plastic, waste? No, because that's from industries. And uh, it's able to push to get all of the plastic straws when many advocacy groups were saying it was a bad call. Right. Yep. Pizza boxes going to the compost bin? Love that. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. It's like, you know, food grease with paper. Love when uh, places have compost bins. Me too. It was a cool thing to see. Fortunate enough to have a backyard, so I learned to compost. Yeah, growing up, my parents had a compost pile. That was uh, something we we uh, did when I was a kid. Paper straws usually contain gluten. I did not know that, but thank you for the heads up. We have more zero waste options in our grocery stores, uh, so I try to do that when I can too. Hell yeah. They aren't stable. Got it. Thank you for all the facts here. We do recycling every week and alternate garbage and compost. Oh, interesting. Very, very interesting. The bubble tea place I went to used straws that felt like plastic but were made with bamboo, and I liked it because they uh, didn't just dissolve in my drink. That's kind of cool. Bamboo is a really durable yet, um, you know, something that, like, does break down naturally type of material. That would be, like, that. I think we should explore that more as, like, a, as a world. Is like an alternative building material. I think there was a re uh, report that 100 companies have been responsible for 70% of pollution since the 1980s. I believe that. Mm -hmm. I absolutely believe that. Um, classic straws. I read a book from a disabled activist, uh, Alice Wong, 
Or is something on how the complete disregard for choice with plastic straws affected disabled people is something I never thought about. Yeah, it's it's great that we have people at least who are raising awareness of it. We moved last Wednesday. I'm now excited to start compost and a mini garden. Sarah, enjoy that. That's great. My mom always had a compost pile. She now has a, bi a big bin she puts it into so seeds don't spread over her garden. That's a smart way to do it. A lot of people um, I grew up around had wooden uh, composting bins that they, like, built in their backyard. They just had, like, a hinge lid on top that they would just, like, you know, be able to open up and whoop, throw their banana peels and whatever in. It's kind of cool. Cool thing. Really easy thing to do, too. It takes, like, very little maintenance. Uh, I bought metal straws to use at home. Easy to clean. I like that. I like metal straws. I do. Some people don't. Yeah, Ren, uh, there's, there's that. And um, actually, with a lot of those reports, uh, people have found out that uh, it's the big companies, but specifically even oil companies, who if you guys don't know, um, oil, petroleum, is the base source of plastic for things like plastic bags and one-use plastic containers and things like that. But they were the ones who were like, the consumer should be recycling so that we are, again, too busy, like, fighting each other, yelling at each other, like, Oh, you didn't throw, you, you threw out that plastic bottle instead of, you know, recycling it. And we get mad at each other instead of being like, Oh, wait, you know, like, the company set this up. Like, they're the ones who, like, created, like, the plastic classifications on a lot of things. So that we'll fight amongst each other and go, See, the companies are trying to recycle because all their packaging is recyclable. It's, it's deep. It goes deep. Bamboo is a grass, so it grows fast. That's kind of cool. A lot of biodegradable plastics. Uh, yeah, the problem with them is um, they're not quite as fast as advertised yet for breakdown. A lot of places have done a, a lot of studies on them, and they're like, yeah, they do not break down as quickly as advertised. It's a cool idea. It's a new science, so they are working on making that more uh, feasible and sustainable and stuff, though. I, I, I do hope we keep exploring the idea of that, for sure. But a lot of it isn't quite where we need it to be yet, and it's still taking up huge amounts of space in landfills and poisoning and polluting, like, the environment. My elementary school had three compost bins? Dope. Very cool. So while my undergrad audit uh, would audit our trash to make sure we were recycling because Wisconsin's pretty good about nature preservation. I didn't know that about Wisconsin. Cool. And the school had a major recycling degree, but here in India, I can't even recycle. That sounds about India as well. <laughs> My brother's grocery store, uh, where he's a manager, is now giving people $5 off their bill if they bring their own reusable bags. Hell yeah! They did that um, a lot during the uh, height of lockdown, I remember. A lot of stores were like, you can save money if you bring reusable bags. Um, and then they kind of stopped doing that stop giving those discounts it's cool to hear that some places still are but yeah it's just very very wild justin trudeau referred to canada as a large oil and gas company uh-oh uh again i i had this comment last stream before i left um try not to bring up canadian politics especially in here because i don't know enough about them I'm not educated enough i don't want to walk onto a fucking landmine plus we have the don't bring up politics rule when you can uh so, just as a heads up on that one, Halloween. I don't want to delve into that at all. Biodegradable plastics need industrial composting with high heat to compost. It still takes time. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, made out of corn? Okay, if we're, if we're exploring things like corn, I hope that that's a thing that gets big funded at some point. But, again, it sounds like it, it's still a newer thing, unfortunately. But that's it. that is cool. That is really, really cool that that's an alternative immortal learner. So weird to think that people don't have bins that aren't garbage bins. We, uh, in in the U.S., a lot of people put out recycling bins in front of their, uh, their homes. Where Morgan and I live, we used to have one, and then, um, our old landlords took it away for some reason. I think they just didn't want to pay the recycling pickup fee because everything is, you know, monetized here in America, unfortunately. Uh, and so Morgan and I, when we want to get rid of our recycling, we take it to one of the recycling plants nearby. 
that do that, like specialize in it. Um, they don't have dedicated recycling combo. Yeah, very wild. You don't want us to get, debate guns and Jesus. Yeah, probably not so much. My political rights out there. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where um, it's like, we'll get into American politics every now and then here, but I do not know nearly enough about foreign politics anywhere for me to be like, yeah, I feel confident talking about that here. I don't want to do that because... Uh, like I said, I could step on a fucking landmine and be like, oh, that sounds like a good policy, and then be, like, agreeing with, like, a white power group in Canada or something. You know, I, I don't want to do that. I'm not educated enough. I'm a woman of my word. My DoorDasher called asking if I wanted to order a different entree because it was going to be an eight-minute wait. I told him that I was willing to wait, and I tip him extra. I doubled uh, his tip from 650 to 15 and uh, might it up into 20. I'm having the dude wait eight extra minutes for me. Oh my God, Liz, I do that for um, anyone who delivers me food. Just because I'm like, you're the one who's making my life easier right now. I'm gonna give you a big ass tip and I cannot imagine that most people tip you because everyone's a freaking cheapskate these days for service workers who work way too hard to get paid the little amount that they do. So I am definitely the same as you. We're all rooting for him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, chat said hi. <laughs> My dinner's here? Yo, I hope you have a great dinner. My cat's watching stream now. Aw, oh, hi, kitty. He's a cutie baby. Oh, my God. So, we left Sig with Morgan's parents while we were in Toronto. And, uh... He apparently had a great time. He just vibed with them and, like, relaxed a ton. Um, Morgan told her mom about like the youtube channel live stream that we put up that has this jazzy music with this like cafe background it's like really soft and just very very chill listening and sig loves it like when we turn it on he runs into the living room and like lays down in front of the tv and just purrs and stares at the tv um but uh we told morgan's mom about it so she would put it on and he was like doing that at her place he was like loving the vibes but um, we went to go pick him up yesterday from their house. And he immediately, like, ran over to us and was, like, doing his, like, shaking rattlesnake tail that he does when he's really happy. He was purring super loud, flopping over and showing his belly. He was, like, so, so happy. Zero anger with us this time. Sometimes he gets, like, a little bit pouty because we leave him for a while. He was so happy to see us. He was so cute. And he's just been vibing the whole day today. Being a big cutie man. Starlight, my tabby cat. Angel is on my lap right now. She has five laps to choose from. Chose mine. Aw. That's the best when you're chosen. This was missing the stream. Uh, Lily's sleeping in my dad's room. Oh, come on, Lily. Other cat here too. Oh, he's a, he's a jazz man. He is. Sig is a jazz man. Siggy knows who his parents are? He does. He's like, I missed you. I gave him so many belly rubs and scritches. Joey's an attention whore, as Joey deserves to be. Andy Grinspear, hello! My cat is locked in a room right now. I promise she's fine. She chose to be? <laughs> That's very funny. Oh, my God. Welcome. Hope you're having a good weekend, by the way. That goes for anyone here tuning in, vibing. My devil cat, Peeb, is next to me. All cozy definitely makes it stream a lot cozier. Love that. Love that. Love that. Very good. Again, I hope people are having a cozy stream like I was talking about earlier. That was just to be transparent mainly about things. No one should feel bad. I hope everyone's getting nice and cozy, ready to buckle down for the weekend with, like, just chill vibes. Get some rest in. You got to drift off to sleep. Go do so. But thank you, thank you for being uh, really supportive of all the content I've been making recently. Like I said, freaking been getting like hundreds of thousands of views on my short form stuff lately. Thank you to anyone who's been a part of that, rooting me on. It's kind of new for me. I'm not like a big short form person. So it's a new venture and it's been very fun. I just have a blast with it all. I don't care how those videos do, but they've all been kind of doing great lately. Starlight's a cuddle kitten. She loves lap. That's adorable. 
I'm writing papers, studying, but I have one of them, uh, chapter slash indigo blankets, so I'm super cozy. Ooh, nice! Is it like a nice, like, plush throw blanket? Mobile doesn't let me make pulls, does it not? Slash pull doesn't work? That's so strange. Oh, hey, Austin with the assist coming on in. Less than 20k points till I game the systems and make the parasocial streamer gift a sub. <laughs> Listen, with the amount of gifted subs I've had tonight, absolutely, that is fair. It's freaking September, you know? One of those plush reading throw blankets. Oh, those are the best. Morgan and I have those on our couch. Because we just, like, cozy up and watch movies together or, like, read on the couch together at night. That's the freaking best. Comfiest type of blanket out there. Some people prefer, like, nice wool blankets. I get it. They're nice. Some people are, you know, into, like, woven stuff. Whatever. Those are fine, too. But a nice plush blanket like that? Oh, you're speaking my language. It's an unrecognized command? That's so weird, Corey. I, I don't know enough about uh, modding via mobile. I have five of those? Yeah, I got a bunch. Twitch sent me a bunch of them also. I have, like, a really nice woven one that was made by a, a small Asian business during AAPI month last year. Back when they gave a shit about AAPI month. And they sent us, like, a care package of, like, Twitch goods. Which was cool. And then this year, they did not give a shit about AAPI month. <laughs> Pull is up. Wait, what pet do you have? Oh, my God. I have a kitty. All right, use your democratic voting rights, chat. Vote on what poll or what animal you have. I only like plush blankets most of the time. Um, so soft. Yeah, they're so soft. They just do something. I'm like very much like a sensory person. Like if I have the wrong kind of socks on, I get freaked out. Like, you know, same with like, you know, pajamas, sleep clothes, whatever. Um, very sensory based with that kind of thing so if it's not not the right kind of blanket i'm like really uncomfy so those kind of plush blankets those are always 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 something i love so if you're ever wondering what to send in my p.o box that's always a good thing <laughs> does chat count as a pet there no chat's my pet Although some of you would probably have people believe that I'm chat's pet. Like, here's a, here's a gifted sub. Now dance around, little monkey, on the screen. Mainly cat owner. Oh, my God. I love cat people. I love dog people, too. But cat people, you have a certain vibe to you. All right? If you can't, um, if you can't see the poll, refresh, especially if you're on mobile, which means leaving and coming back. There you go. I almost put chat. <laughs> chat is a pet, but not owned by any of us viewers. <laughs> you're you're owned by your own neurodivergencies. That's what it is. Your uh, your impulsive thoughts. Go. Oh, you should um, you should play with that, like sticker that you have on your desk right now. And you'll do it. You'll follow the command. For the little treat of serotonin. Dance, strummer, dance. Ooh. Was that a good dance? We're your pet? You can be. You can be. How many of you have been influenced to buy the cozy games that I play, huh? I Pavlov you into buying the game. I have two cats right now, but lore time, I used to have a horse when I was younger. Yo, that that's so cool. We saw a bunch of horses at our uh, state fair that we went to last week, and uh, they were the big ones, like the big Clydesdales and stuff. They were really cool to see up close and in person. And they all liked me because I used to be a horse girl back in the day. Chris, is that a what is happening? No, this is a crayon. Nettles, what? Why are you giving me so much money? Dance Thank you very much. Ooh, there we go. Was that a good dance? I hope so. I hope that was worth 420. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. What the hell? Can we get some pride and some hype in the chat? Oh, my God. Jack and Easter, hello. Hi. Welcome to the stream. Oh, my gosh. 
Uh, I was influenced into playing Palea. I also can't say whether or not I've been uh, Pavlov because if it was successful, I wouldn't know anyway. That's true. The secret is, is you go, well, I'm, I haven't been brainwashed by you, Brian. What are you talking about? You'd like to think that, wouldn't you? Maybe it's so subtle. Maybe it's so stupendously diabolical that you haven't even noticed yourself, chat. <laughs> keep thinking that. Yeah, absolutely keep thinking that, chat, that you weren't Pavlov'd. Hmm. That you weren't... I didn't do anything? It's a fake Nettles. It's a, the imposter. Nettles, thank you very, very much. Good God. That's really kind of you. Thank you. Um, I was going to say the other thing is, is some of you... there's We have, like, catchphrases and shit here, right? We have fun, like, catchphrases. I say good news. You guys feed me the good news. I, uh, I get overwhelmed when people are, like, donating money or subs. People go, oh, hashtag break Brian. Give more money. Oh. I do my, my makeup looks and my cosplays. You you say, mommy. You've been Pavlov, chat. You didn't even realize this whole time. You thought, oh, fun in-jokes. <laughs> Little do you know. I use my psychology degree and my past as a psych counselor to really get into the, into the nitty-gritty of your brain. It's deep in there. These thoughts, these responses. <laughs> Brian isn't the boss of me? I'm not the boss of you. You're right. Keep believing that. I'm not. Viva La Repistance? Oh, yeah. That's so strange. That's so strange that every time I'm like, it's a communal pee break. Everybody goes, oh, Viva La Repistance. I'm not going to listen to that. So strange that I act surprised every time I see the repistance. As if I were expecting it already. <laughs> you thought you had an individualized identity chat, that you were making your own decisions, that the illusion of choice was simply that. Something that was a conspiracy theory that people talk about all the time. Fate's not real. Things can't be pre-programmed into your existence. <laughs> You'd like to think that, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? That would make you feel cozy and safe, wouldn't you? Feel that way in a cozy community. <laughs> Viva la repistance. Ah, yeah, fair. Okay. We made Creamy George. You did not choose him. Okay, that, that one is fair. That one's actually real. See, there's some stuff that's real that has to be mixed in. Otherwise, you would have all caught on to this much sooner. But yes, Creamy George is one. I did. I had nothing to do with Creamy George. I will never claim Creamy George is just mine. That was on you, Chad. Cre all credit to the original artist, you know? Gave up on thinking I had an original thought years ago. <laughs> Listen, here's the thing that you... Like, I get a lot of young content creators who ask me things. They're like, wait, but how do I, like, do things uniquely? Oh, I found out that this thing I really wanted to do, someone already did before. Like, babe... Everything that's content has already been done before, at least in some tangentially related way. Nothing that you could possibly make right now is 100% original. The thing that makes it worth investing time and effort and energy into is, like, your personalized spin and your personality. Whatever you individually put into that is what makes it worth it to watch for the people who want to watch you and support you. But... Trying to rack your brain and feeling bad that, oh no, someone already did these types of content things before. Oh, now I have to start from ground zero, uh, from square one. Now I have to start all over again and, and come up with something totally different. And now, as a result, I'm not even going to get started on the thing I was really passionate about I wanted to make. As long as you're not, like, directly ripping someone off, there's a good chance that whatever you do is going to be accepted and enjoyed by someone out there because of your personalized spin on it. Even if it is not the most original thing in the world. Because, again, you know, like, do you know how many, like, fucking, like, book tubers there are? People who all read the same trending book and then give their breakdown of what they felt about that book? There's, there's, like, thousands of them. Do you know how many Let's Players there are? Probably millions at this point. You... You are the product, not the product, but you're the brand. You're the item 
the thing that makes your content stand out. Okay? Brookie, hello! Hi! Brian is gaslight girl bossing us. I I did a long time ago and none of you even realized. Why? <laughs> Uh, my brain is so bad about that. Even putting my own spin on something feels like I'm just copying one-to-one. -one. See, this is why, Austin, this is why I started um, making short-form content. The shit that I'm talking about are just observations. I'm sure a million other people have already made. I don't care. I'm just saying what my thoughts are. They came from my brain. I was not inspired by someone else to have said thoughts or put them into short-form content form. And all of those have been, like, taken the fuck off. It has been wild to watch a short-form stuff do well. Especially on Instagram. Out of any of those places, so strange to see that Instagram reels are, are where my short-form are doing the best. What I need is Facebook or Meta or whatever they're calling themselves now to monetize, give me the option to monetize my reels so I can get a little bit of, you know, kickback in the bank for making my short-form stuff. That's what I need to have happen. But as of right now, I'm very happy to see how it's performing. You know who probably did have an original thought? Whoever the fuck thought of that movie was Santa versus the Devil? <laughs> probably, yeah. I don't think anyone had that idea before. My least effort videos go the most... Yeah, again, my freaking Instagram reel, the video of me talking about this weird trash can in Morgan and my Airbnb. Like, hey, Bree, enjoy your pizza. Like, right now, okay, let's see. Let me see. Um... <laughs> like let's see the, the, the SIG video the video about me being codependent emotionally on SIG is starting to pick up steam I put that up a week ago you never know I don't know like the algorithms on short form like refeed all the content to people it's wild um, let's see so we got Let's see. This reel with Sig in it and about how emotionally dependent I am on him. Uh, before I started stream, had 19,000 views uh, on it. Uh, when I woke up today, it had 13,000. So that means I got 6,000 between when I woke up and when I went live. And now that I'm live, it has 31,000 views on it. On Instagram reels. So it got 12,000 views while we were sitting here. Hanging out, watching me play Power Wash Sim. All I did was I talked about how much I love my cat and how I miss him when I go to get groceries. That is not an original thought. A million other people have probably said that. But I said it my way. And it did fine. So I hope that that gives some, some inspiration and some hope to those of you who are smaller content creators or newer content creators. Anything can take off. Do it your way. Stop trying to fit into a trend. You know? Uh, Fizzy! Hey, what's up? Good to see you here. Hello, hi. And then the trash can one that I made while Morgan and I were on, which was just like a throwaway one. I was just like, I'm, I just want to show off this silly trash can and make a garbussy joke, um, which I did not think was going to take off in any way. First off, it, it started getting onto a weird side of Instagram where people are mad at me because I didn't show my actual feet and that I had socks on. So that's a, the, a lot of the comments I've been getting recently. So that's a fun place to be on the internet. Um... <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to see my feet because I basically have hairless Bilbo Baggins feet. Little, like, stumpy hobbit feet. Um, but that TikTok, or that, that Instagram, real, because it didn't do that great on, on TikTok. Maybe it will pick up, like, you know, in a few days. Who knows? Um, but that one has 253,000 views on Instagram reels. Hobbit feet are hairy, though? Yeah, well, that's why I said they're the hairless version of Bilbo Baggins' feet. 253,000 on Instagram Reels on something I just made a silly throwaway joke on. Um, the SIG video that I put up has 48.7 thousand on TikTok. Just make the content you want to make. Talk about the shit you want to talk about, you know? People apparently will find you. They will. It's and it all can't pop off. That's the other thing. That's a that's a reminder. Why are we talking about feet? Um, because I I put up that uh, Instagram reel that has two hundred fifty thousand views, um, and people it got on the weird side of 
Instagram reels where people are mad at me now because I don't show bare feet on it. I have my socks on. Um, <laughs> that's the internet. That is the internet. If you had told me 10 years ago when I started making content that someday people would be really mad at me because I allegedly lied about showing my feet. My feet are there still. They're just in socks. I kept them, you know, nice and wrapped up. Um, if you told me that 10 years ago, I would not believe you. I'd be like, no. But that's where we're at. I have surprisingly small feet for my height. Part of the reason why I fall so much. I have little tiny feet too. I think I would just... <laughs> There's a lot of evidence pointing to, like, genetically, I probably should have just been a girl. I have, like, tiny feet. Not saying that all all girls have tiny feet and that you need tiny feet to be a girl. I just I'm I'm my it's the joke I always make of my Y chromosome is a complete uh waste. Instagram loves feet and garbussies. <laughs> Why are they so obsessed with seeing other people's grippers? I don't really know. Cause the first couple were jokes. That were about my feet, and now I'm getting, like, people who are like, okay, but this was a waste of my time because I was expecting real feet. And it's like, mm, okay. No free feet? Right. It's like, you could pay money for that, I guess. Tiny feet, gang. <laughs> I hate feet. <laughs> $5 per toe, in my honest opinion. Oh, my God. I make jokes with Morgan all the time where I'm like, if I was one of those content creators that was only obsessed with numbers and money... I would just make it a completely anonymous, like you guys would never, like no one would ever know it was me on there because I wouldn't show my face and I wouldn't talk. I would just make an OnlyFans account where I only showed my feet. And I'd probably make a lot of money doing that. And I wouldn't ever have to ID myself. No one would ever have to know it was me. But also, I don't care about numbers and money that much. So, that will probably never happen. Just know though. Feet give me the ick. <laughs> Do you ever like look down? You're like putting on your shoes. You're like, oh, ah, feet. Not the thirst on main internet, right? <laughs> Do you have socks or shoes on them are still real feet, right? Sock feet are okay. Well, my, my feet were socked in the video that I'm talking about. Feet cam coming to stream near you. Listen, I have a friend who plays games with his feet. It's his whole gimmick is he is really, really, really good at controlling different controllers with his feet. And so he plays video games with his feet. And he does it here on Twitch. <laughs> Sock feet are okay. That's what it is. If someone offered me money to see my feet, I'd do it in a heartbeat, but I hate it so much. There are websites that you are able to do that. And again, you could be anonymous doing it, theoretically. Not telling you that's what you should do, but also, I wouldn't judge you if you did. Especially because... Uh, the world is fucking weird right now. Everyone needs a little bit more money. Like, I, I feel the pinch too. I get it. There have been nights that I've sat there going, maybe I'll start doing that. Who knows? He has, he has pretty feet. J-Rock. Yeah, J-Rock. Yo, what's up, Trixie? Hello. I have a Korean friend who makes that kind of content. And wow, there's a lot of... There's a huge market for it. Gigantic market for anything. You can show off your hands on, like, OnlyFans. People are into everything, you know? There are there are a lot of people who are like, you know, not to kink shame, but like they're kind of touch starved and they are really into very specific things. And I do not shame anyone who's like, I am going to uh, make some money doing this thing. You know, again, as long as you're not hurting yourself and you're not hurting other people, do your thing, especially with the way the world is right now. The economy is in shambles for a lot of people. I have pretty feet. I need money. Hmm? There is a huge market. In college, my friend got sent $50 by a guy who wanted a picture of her. So she sent a pic of her bare shoulder. Oh, my God. Recently told my mom how much money some people make with feet stuff. She literally went, wait, actually, should I try it? There's a market out there for every type of everything. That's all I'll say. I've been on the internet long enough to know. I've seen my fair share. Some of it against my will. Some of it completely just like, oh, it's there like in my feed. Okay, cool. I guess that's something now I know about. You know? <laughs> it's the internet. 
It's a little bit of everything all of the time. A bit of everything all of the time. There's a market for things that I really wish there wasn't a market for in the corner of the internet. I agree, but here's the thing. We don't have to go to that corner of the internet. That's for that corner of the internet to enjoy together. Me personally, I, I won't be a part of it most likely. At any point, I don't foresee myself getting interested in it. But I'm glad that it's there for those people and they're really living it up. They're enjoying each other's company. Doing the things they like to do with the whatever parts of their body they like to do it with. If you hide your toes, they complain. But if you show them, they tell you to put your grippers away. <laughs> it all depends. Like I said, there's a market out there for all of it. I guarantee that there's some like OnlyFans accounts that do really, really well. Showing their like curled up, balled up toes. <laughs> like make it make a little fist out of your feet. You know, it makes it like, hey, guys, for every five dollars donated to these posts, I will put up another post with my feet in like a fist. There's a little moth friend on my wi window chilling. Yo, what's up, little moth friend? How we doing? I'm not here to judge. Like I said, if, if that is your gig, if that's your side gig and you don't want anyone to know about it, but it's like how you get by fucking get by. The world sucks right now. I could use, like, an extra, like, five digits worth of money to get through the financial issue I'm in. I'm right there with y'all. I understand. It's weird. I'm very lucky I get to, to do this job that I get to do, you know? To work that off. Once again, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. And, yeah, and there's, you know... Like I said, as long as there's ethics involved in the content you're creating, do your thing. Who am I to ever judge you? I play video games on the internet. I'm a grown-ass child. Breaking news, Lily decided she was missing out and it has joined us. Hello! Hi, Lily. I heard you were being silly earlier. Not joining in, but welcome. I like that uh, we went from talking about cats and how cool cats are to, to grippers on main. <laughs> Just the kind of community that we are. And some of you choose to financially support this. This is the content that you're like, not like, wow, I'm really praying on Brian's downfall now. Instead, you're like, I will financially support this content so it continues to exist indefinitely. You, ha you have to realize that's on you, chat. You've been Pavlovian. Oh, boy. The hashtag break Brian Pavlov. <laughs> Who doesn't love diverse conversations? <laughs> it's all I have here. You know, I can make very curated content on, you know, TikTok and YouTube and stuff like that. But here, it's just full blown. The ADHD is piloting everything I'm doing. <laughs> the diversity of the internet, cats and feet. <laughs> Truly, though. This behavior should be encouraged. Stop. Should it? I, I was just saying, uh, as long as you're making content with ethics involved and you're not hurting yourself or anyone else, then, you know, everything's free game. But I am making content that has to psychically be causing a lot of damage to some people out there. So really, I, I don't deserve anyone's support. I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be real with everyone. I, I, I don't. I'm causing a large amount of mental damage to people at the moment. If I had world's worst pictures of Moth to show to the world, which Discord channel would that go into? Um, Probably... Uh, no, honestly, probably like we ha we have like a pets and animals one, so maybe pets and animals. Uh, it's not like not your pet, but like that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Wait, enjoy your food. Wait, did Liz get the food? Food is right, Liz. Enjoy your food. Oh my god, psychic. Uh. <laughs> assumption under eth ethicalism that almost gave me a stroke reading that new pet for me there you go i'd say touch i touch grass there you go 
So Corey said put it in I touch grass or or put it in the animal one, whichever one you feel more comfortable doing. Thank you for the input. I touch grass does kind of work though, yeah, because it's like nature visiting you. It did give me a stroke, gave you a stroke to write it out. That was actually you having one actively while you wrote that, Ren. We're back from bath time. Faye book called me Dada the whole time and smells like sleepy time lavender lotion. Doing great. He's so close. He'll get it right. <laughs> sleepy time lotion, though. That sounds cute. By the bath time went well. That's too cute, right? Oh, my God. I thought this fountain was going to be, like, a really quick job in this game, too. Apparently. Apparently. Apparently, it's going to take a, a moment here. Also, for some reason, my controls are still screwed up. I forgot that this was happening. I can't mouse wheel down to change my... Ooh, dirt details. Ooh, I like that. Why was that off? I like dirt details. Um, like, we got... Okay, so next nozzle is mouse wheel up. Wait, what? Huh? Why did it do that? I'm trying to fix this! Freshly washed infants are like the one good human aroma. <laughs> I thought you said no mint for a moment, or for a second, but I know making those kinds of puns would kill you inside. <laughs> I've done a couple here and there. Not fully against them all the time. <laughs> Missing translation? What? What is that? What do you mean? There we go. Is that not working? Does that mean that it's not mapped properly in the game code? Oh, they screwed up the game code. This isn't even a me issue, chat. What the heck? There we go. We also have the type of dirt that I'm cleaning on things pop up. Baby Moss sent to Discord. Cute. Do not break now, right? I don't want it to break now. It's okay. It's a very minor thing. It's just for selecting what nozzle I have. Should be fine overall. There we go. Ooh, uh, things are getting done in the game. Very nice. Thirty-four percent is it? Wow. They're so cute. I will look after stream. I can't wait to see the moth. Moths are cool. I love that they have like hairy antenna. It's kind of cool. Or antennae? Is that antennae when it's multiple, right? Antennas? I don't know these things. I'm not a bug scientist. Also, a lot of the times moth cocoons are... Like, really cool. Like, really, really cool designs. Like, nature, how did you do that? Why do you make something so dope? He's got the right intention, just the wrong shortened version of parent. One of my cousins sent us a big ass bottle of the Johnson 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 and Johnson's lavender L lotion. Happen to remember it worked really well with me as a baby. Oh, he loves the aftermath, just not the process of putting lotion on. I think he liked and dislikes the feeling of it now that I'm an adult. He's like me. Oh, that's so cute though. That's such a cute thing that it's like, oh, this worked on you when you were a baby, so it'll probably work on your baby. Adorable, love that. Very, very sweet, in my opinion. I love the, the updates about uh, Baby Faye. I guess 
this is not that much work to go all the way through the nozzle cycle. It's a little bit annoying. But it is what it is. What it is. Mmm. Nice serotonin ding. My words have been wonky all day? Oh no, I, I got what you meant, Fallen. I'm sorry if I read that weird. I totally understood what you meant. Very cute, though, that your your cousin was like, hey, this worked on you, your baby. Very thoughtful kind of thing. Brings it kind of full circle, you know? I also love when I hear about, like, kids that have inherited something from their parents. Where it's like, oh, my kid is starting to, like, show that they uh, feel the same way like I did. Or that I do, or whatever. My kid hates the feeling of lotion, too. I'm someone who does not like oily or greasy things on me. And a lot of oat, a lot of lotions feel that way to my skin. I get really picky about, like, sunscreens I can put on, moisturizers. Morgan hooked me up with a really great, like, facial moisturizer that I use, that I like a lot. But definitely understand the, like, sensory skin issue stuff that a lot of people in our community talk about. It's almost like we're all neurodivergent. <laughs> I hate lotion, especially on my palms. It's the worst uh, feel. Yeah, it feels like gross, right? I hate it. It's like all like greasy and weird. What's the moisturizer? Um, it's a Cetaphil, Cetaphil SPF like 15 daily facial moisturizer. Or so I, th I think it's really, it comes in the white and green bottle. It's really, really nice. Cetaphil, love them. Yeah, it's really, really nice. Um, and then, like, niacinamide and retinol are things that are fine on my skin as well. Love lotion makes me feel pretty, pretty princess, and it smells good. See, I'm glad some of you do. That's great. It's made for you, but, like, yeah, I, I'm very picky about which ones I use. They have to be just right texture-wise, like, um, and then also do what I need them to do for my skin. Like, a lot of people ask me why I look so young. I think a lot of it is just skincare. A lot of it's genetics, but a lot of it is like, you know, get a, get a skincare routine going now. I'm telling you. Moisture free. <laughs> Surave is very good. That might be one of the ones I've used as well. Or maybe that is the one I'm using. I could be wrong. Whatever the white and green bottle. Said it feels a, a solid choice. Morgan knows her shit. She puts in a lot more research than me, and she doesn't have the same sensory issues as me. So, um, she will occasionally find me something that she's like, I know this is going to feel gross to you, but, like, it's going to do wonders for your skin, for your, like, type of skin. And she's always right. So, definitely, you know, if you're looking for a new skincare routine, she'll have the, the details for you. Uh, moisturizer is such confusion for a while for me. I thought I had oily skin, but turns out I just have occasional acne. I actually desperately needed moisturizer. Here's the thing. So, I have really oily skin. So, I need certain types of uh, moisturizers or my skin does get more oily in a bad way. But the common mistake I used to make when I was younger was that because my skin was already oily, it doesn't need moisture. When in reality, that makes your body react by producing more oil to make up for that lack of moisture. Uh, because it's missing certain types of moisture in your skin. And then it makes your, your skin way worse. So, I didn't know that. And then when I started using the moisturizer I do, it, it helps a ton. It's great. I'm like way less oily throughout the day. And my skin's healthier. Use my a survey uh, as my daily lotion because my skin's bumpy. Hey, I, I'm glad it helps you. Lotion helps me reduce sensory ics post-shower. Yeah, I I was um I would like wash my hands in public restrooms when we were in Toronto. And I'd walk out and be like, my hands are so dry. Ugh, I hate it. Uh, some lotions actually make my hands burn and get a rash. Oh, no. Yeah, you definitely got to be careful about sensitivities like that. My kid hates a lot of textures that have to do with hygiene care. It's been a struggle to find what works for him. It's really difficult, but I am glad that things have, um, 
become a little bit like a lot of companies are becoming more aware of that and offering alternatives we definitely have a lot more options than we did when i was younger moisturizer and sunscreen really help but i hate sunscreen yeah sunscreen's so ugly to me but I, you know it helps a ton helps your skin that age moisturizers hydrators uh humectants help a lot with oily skin yep had to learn it the hard way but i learned it Back from dinner, did I miss any incredibly cursed conversation topics? Uh, we talked about feet for a while and making money posting feet on the internet. But we're now on to skincare, which is a little more wholesome. Um, I love post-shower lotion because I have the world's driest legs. And I also shower in lava. <laughs> That's fair. Fragrance-free makeup wipes were also... Oh my god, yeah. Fragrance-free makeup wipes... 100% the move. Scented lotions are often some of the worst for making hands burn, especially and in particular if you have dry, dehydrated skin. Since the small cracks from the dryness can be irritated by a lot of fragrances. Yep, that is a very, very good tip. 100% true. Straight up put on gloves that I have legally acquired from work to put on lotion. <laughs> we all have our, our routines. I know people who have those gloves that you, like, put the lotion on your skin and then put the glove over it to hold in the, like, lotion moisture so it doesn't rub off as you're, like, going about your day and touching things. I know people who do that, like, as their, like, nighttime routine. I can't do that. I can't imagine. Ugh. I, I, I just imagine how that would feel on my skin. I'd freak out. So, yeah. Post-shower lotioning would be more effective for me if I actually remembered set, uh, remembered each time. It's hard to get into, like, a regular routine, I feel like, when it comes to self-care stuff like that. Uh, Glycomed is the bestest? I don't even know what that one is. Is that a... Is that a, um... A type of, uh, moisturizer? Is that a... A brand? I've actually never heard of that. Scented lotions often make my skin drier. Yeah, a lot of times, um, the ingredients in scented things can dry out your skin or can uh, have adverse reactions to your skin definitely work like skincare like skin's our biggest organ right we want it to like be good we want to like protect the shit gotta do your research you can't just be like oh well it says it's got the label that says it's the best moisturizer best lotion on the market i'll just use this one that that's a surefire way to just buy into whatever marketing scheme or actually cause damage to your skin Gotta do that research. Some days my routine's two to three steps. Some days I do like 10 different things. Yeah, Morgan's trying to get me onto a better like nighttime skin routine that is like five, six steps. But I'm so lazy. I'm like, uh, I mainly only do it um, after nights where I'm wearing makeup. I'll do like the whole thing. But a lot of the times I just do my like morning skincare routine. I'm doing okay so far, you know? Baby Faye has eczema. Oh, no! Prior to about two months ago, if I had to find a proper treatment, uh, find an antibiotic. That's good, at least. I'm glad that you're finding the products that are working and stuff. Um, Glycomed is a hand lotion and an unscented version. And it's so good. It's thick, though, so uh, some with texture versions may not like it. Yeah, I can't do too thick. It's got to, like, rub in and not rest on my skin kind of thing use it as cream cream and it's thick enough that it's not oily and gross comes in scented but it's specifically a hand cream interesting so like you put it on your body though you're not like using it as like a face cream because i was like why don't i just put this uh body cream that you gave me on my face and morgan was like do not do that do not do that I was like, I don't know any better because I am dumb about this stuff. But now I'm learning. I'm becoming a learner. I have to whip up my own hair grease as a black person with mixed hair type. It's fun, though, and smells nice. My kid will use my hair grease uh, where others uh, irritated sensory perceptions. That's great that you've... I mean, I'm glad that that is a routine that works out for you. Can't do uh, makeup wipes and cleansing wipes, and that's one of my other only big issues. They burn my face and eyes so bad. Um, but instead I use my... I was going to say, you should use my cellar water with a cotton round. Because that's what I do. That's what works for me. 
Paired with his hatred for lotion and the eczema, it's a squirmy, roly-poly crying fest. I bet. Honestly, the amount of steps in a routine doesn't matter quite so much. It's more important to just ensure that you use... You have... Yep. That's the thing. Is like Morgan has found some really good routine. She is a... If you guys don't know, um, before Morgan was doing mainly Terra as her content, she was 100% into like self-care, beauty stuff um and uh, fashion also um but she has put in countless hours into learning skincare and stuff so yeah it's it's one of those things where i have the tips and tricks from her which is great because they are pretty much foolproof at this point and have worked for years for both of us in some fantastic ways very good stuff but she has like a good like six step situation going that's really really effective and very affordable and nice honestly and then we have like our daily routines as well use it as hand cream because it's hand cream and then if i use too much i just put the rest on my face i hope that that is good for your skin on your face that's all i'll say but i'm glad if it is i'm glad that it is normally those are from what i was taught formulated very very differently <laughs> might be okay for your skin on your face but might be also a better product out there for you might be better on just your arms and your hands it's always great when you have a partner who can help you build a routine oh yeah morgan's really really wonderful because she's done so much uh research for me because again i just get lost trying to learn about all of it and she's like okay you have like oily asian skin type let's find like a routine that's going to work for oily asian skin We'll test out the product. She'll be like, is it working? I'll be like, this one sucks. This one's good. Um, and then uh, as a result of trial and error, we've just found a great routine for my skin as well. Does she still do skincare so every night? She does. So if you have questions, you want to get on a better skincare routine and know what products you should and shouldn't be using on yourself. She is uh, got like chemist brain pretty much at this point. She'll be like, oh, yeah, that stuff should only be applied around your, your cheeks and not your eyes. And she, like, knows all of it. It's wild. My routine is just wash and moisturize my face, but I don't know if it's enough to call it a routine. Uh, but I have some friends who have full routines. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's They're caring about their skin early so that, you know. And it's not that aging is a bad thing. We all age. We're all going to show our age at some point on all of our features. Not the worst thing to age. Just some people do want to just take care of, like, their skin, you know? Have it not be dry and patchy and stuff as much as they can help it. So, those of you who do that, more power to you. Those of you who don't, hey, your choice. That's okay, too. I'm never going to make fun of how you look or anything. I have family members ask me about skincare, and when I give advice, I always keep in mind uh, what they need and how many steps will it take. Enjoyable enough to keep up with regularly so it doesn't get overwhelming. Yeah, absolutely. Again, you work it out individually. No, no one's skincare routine is going to be the exact same as someone else's, you know? Surprised that Morgan hasn't done a YouTube channel for fashion and skincare? Uh, that's literally her YouTube channel. So, <laughs> you you don't have to be surprised anymore. That's literally her YouTube channel. Like, her, her old YouTube videos, if you go back and watch any of them. She did fashion content for, like, 10 years. So that's on you guys for not looking. Look for us in other places. You'll find our content all over the internet. Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. We're not just on Twitch. I promise you. We've been doing this shit for a long time and have experimented with a lot of different types of content. That's why I said her old content was that uh, earlier in the conversation. She did that for all of her old videos. She used to have a blog before we were YouTubers. For years and years she was actually a very uh not very renowned but she was like medium sized renowned enough by like other fashion bloggers in the blog community what was that yes you were you knew some really huge people on the blog scene it's wild um she does have a youtube channel yes uh she does yeah again why we why i've said many times we have been doing youtube for 10 years <laughs> like, that that doesn't mean we've been doing YouTube for 10 years by watching YouTube for 10 years. It means we've both been making content on there for 10 years. So, 
go to a dermatologist for my acne yeah if you have like actual like skin conditions like i uh, you know getting information from a dermatologist is definitely recommended for sure morgan has the tutorial i used when first experimenting with applying makeup yo that's so cool her makeup styles definitely changed a lot since then but she used to make a lot of like get ready with me videos she still does on tiktok doing uh like outfit posts and stuff you getting ready for yeah been meaning to do more for my skin because i've had annoying breakouts slightly my main goal with skincare is to just not have uh itchy painful skin issues i don't really care about the visual appearance of the acne yeah that's fair i mean again always worth like maybe talking to a dermatologist about or just experimenting with different products you know research is free to do these days online google is a free resource with literally unlimited information if i wanted to learn how to like build a model plane after never doing it in my life i could look up a tutorial online for free it's wild if i wanted to learn how to you know play an instrument i could probably find tutorials of it so do your research you know i know that it's like oh i'm not in school i don't want to do that but like you got a free library of info on the internet so definitely experiment definitely learn definitely research it's worth it to do you'll have life skills that you can use forever and things you can know about and have a school conversation starters or just useless fun trivia knowledge that's what i use it for to keep stream conversations running <laughs> talking about skincare routines i'm gonna dip and do mine so be back in a bit Oh, good. Couple, you might be back uh, in time then for us raiding Morgan. Again, if anyone needs makeup or skincare tips, uh, she is 100% someone who has taught me everything I know about it. Definitely recommended to ask her about it. Because here's the thing about her tarot streams, too, if you don't know. Obviously, spirituality is, like, a big focus during those. But, uh... She's always willing to talk about other stuff. If you have questions about, like, makeup, skincare, she loves talking about that stuff. She loves talking about her other interests outside of just uh, paranormal and uh, spiritual stuff. So heads up if you're looking for those good, good vibes with the uh, the good skincare advice. Go do that. My partner streams. Late good news, my, uh, I went for coffee with my aunts today. The coffee shop we went to had a honey peach lavender pastry that was so good. Sounds pretty good. Play with dogs in the park? Nice. Very, very nice. Very good stuff. But, uh, for those who don't know, Morgan was talking to me recently about wanting to make more fashion content again. Because that was kind of like her first love on YouTube. It's how she got her start. It's how she kicked off her content journey. So definitely, if you're not subbed to her YouTube channel, go do that. And uh, you can maybe see some of that kind of content coming up. She's going to try to make a Toronto uh, vlog based on what we did while we were there. Um, and then obviously, she also has her spirituality YouTube channel as well. Queen of Cups Magic. So check that out. And a whole bunch of other stuff, you know? Is a croissant pastry with honey, lavender glaze, peach filling. That sounds good. I'd love to see Morgan's fashion content. You got 10 years worth of it. You can go back and watch. I will be many things online over the years. But the number one thing I will always be is the, the most active, the most enthusiastic cheerleader for Morgan's content. Morgan has been slept on way too often in her content career. I want more people to go and watch her stuff, whether it's new, whether it's old. Go blow up her content. Go support the hell out of it. Support her when she goes live later here tonight. We're going to raid into her channel when I'm done streaming. But she has lots of interest outside of the spiritual stuff. So go check out her fashion stuff, makeup stuff, if you're into that. Support the hell out of my girl. I love her. What? I love you. The dress you got her for her birthday was chef's kiss, and she looks stunning, right? She looks incredible in everything. That's the thing. 
she bought me a new dress that I'm really excited to try on. Um, well, I tried it on, but uh, when we were there, but um, she bought me a new dress. I'm really excited to get dressed up in for a stream eventually, or for like a fun photo shoot whenever I'm not being a lazy piece of shit and I actually set up my Patreon. Um, but I can't wait to show that off. Actually, Morgan, where did you put that dress? Maybe I'll show everyone. It's in the kitchen? Okay. One second, chat. I will be right back. I'll be right back, okay? I'm gonna go grab it, just so I can show it off. I will be back. Uh, I also have to use the bathroom quick, so. Unofficial slash official pee break. Here's Bernie. Enjoy him. I will be back. <laughs> Hello, Raiders. Thank you, uh, Green Tea Brain Rot, for the raid. I hope that you had a great stream. Thank you very, very much. Um, thank you, genuinely. Uh, <laughs> How was your stream? What were you up to? Sorry, I'm just trying to catch up on chat here because I was away from the screen for a second. Um, forget the BRB screen cackle every time. It's wide Bernie. Brian's not here. I will sneakily drop a complimenting message. I've been loving both of you, each finding your own stride in content and what kind you love to create and building your own communities that have the most immaculate vibes. Very proud of both of you and grateful I find you. Oh my God. Rookie, thank you. Really appreciate you a lot. Seriously. Thank you so, so much. Um, I'm back. Uh, I hope everyone had a good pee break. I was just about to show off uh, a dress my partner bought me while we were in 
um, Canada in Toronto. Uh, we were in the uh, clearance rack uh, at H and M, and we found it. I was like, "Oh my God, that's my style. It's cute." You asked someone to homecoming during a Minecraft, well, and they said yes. It's so fun. Congrats, that's amazing. Sig, what are you doing? Get out of that box. He's trying to climb into a box in our office. Get out of there. He's trying to eat the styrofoam. Don't do that. That's not food. Freaking weird cat. Clearance rack, my beloved, right? We're bargain shoppers, 100%. Are you ready to go? Okay. All right. Um, so I get here. Here's the thing, chat. I think I'll... I'm going to shut down power wash. I'm going to show off the dress as the last thing I do on stream. And then we're going to raid over to Morgan. So uh, please stick around for the raid. I would love, love, love for her first stream back to just be full of so much support and love. Please, please, please. Um, but she said she wanted to surprise me with something while we were on her trip. So she bought me a new outfit that I'll probably be wearing on stream eventually. But... I don't know why it's so. It's really cute, right? The color and the pattern, right? Isn't it so cute? It's very me. It's like very cottage corey for me. Cute. I'm glad that people think so. I'll be I'll be rocking it eventually. Probably with the like makeup that everyone liked me in in the filter that I <laughs> kept putting pictures up. Also, I wanted to point out, so, I, I, not to change the, yeah, the, the neckline. I love the neckline. I love the, like, sort of poofier sleeves as well. They're cute. Um, are you live yet? Okay, go live, and then we can raid over to you. Anyway, thank you to Morgan for that. So, that will be something I wear very soon on stream. Uh, very excited to wear it. It's really, really nice. It's very cute. Um, but she surprised me with that when we were out. She was like, I'm going to buy this for you. And I was like, what the heck? So, it was really, really cute. Uh, not to shift subject too much either, but... So, the Airbnb trash can video of mine on Instagram Reels, I was telling you guys it was going viral, has got 2,000 more views uh, during the bathroom break, apparently. Um, the other fandom that is a little less cursed than the feet people who have found it are... I, I use the phrase, one piece during uh the video and as a result the one piece community on instagram has found it and they are everybody loves garbussy they kind of do water which it's very i did i did not think that throwaway joke was going to do so well on instagram but everyone keeps writing about one piece on in the comments which is amazing i love that i love being a part of like one piece gram instagram <laughs> so the one piece community found it and they keep replying with like gifts of one piece and stuff it's perfect so good <laughs> that's so funny right isn't that great anyway that those are all the updates i have you guys got to see my new dress we got a little bit of power washing done we've gotten to just vibe and catch up about my very fun trip with morgan i'm sure she'll remember more of it and share more about it in her stream but we're gonna raid over to her did someone say one piece <laughs> the one piece is real it's real Anyway, please stick around for the raid. I want we're going to have a wonderful stream back. All of you are great. Thank you so, so much for hanging out. Uh, another early stream tomorrow for Sunday, and then the week's going to just be a normal week of content and fun stuff. Like I said, change of plans is Fridays will no longer have streams. I'm going to work on YouTube videos. I'm going to work on short form. I'm going to work on voice acting, stuff where... I can be behind the scenes doing that stuff. You guys get your Fridays to just chill and vibe however you want. Uh, and then Saturdays, we'll do early streams like tonight's just to, to hang out and have a good time. And people will not be as sleepy and whatnot. <laughs> um, oh, Liz, that's so sweet. What the heck? Thanks for a great stream. 72 Muses, thank you for being here. The one piece is real and it's in the garbo season. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> oh my god. Oh boy. The Saturday stream start next week or tomorrow? Um, it is Saturday today. 
I know it is very easy to lose track of the week. I thought it was like uh, Thursday when we were in Toronto and it was Tuesday. Um, so it, today was the Saturday stream. Um, but uh, as of as of uh, last last week was the last time I did a Friday stream ever. That's going to be the way that it's going to be unless uh, things shift back in favor of Fridays instead of Saturday. But like I said, I want you guys to give me um, your feedback, honestly, transparently, as much as you can. We uh, have that feedback form on the Discord as well. Uh, I just want people to know I want to treat you like adults. You're not stupid. You're not idiots. You're people I want to be as open with, as transparent with. When I make a change, it's not to make anyone feel bad as to why I'm making the change. I just want to give you the direct reasons as to why I do it. Because I want this to be the best community in the world. I want to make the best freaking content for everyone that I can. I want to be able to, to joke around and have like a good relationship with our, my community. So um, I hope that that makes sense. And thank you to those of you who have been giving me your feedback and been really, really kind and, and supportive and cool. Uh, it means a ton. Like genuinely. Thank you so, so much. Uh, it's great to be back. I missed everybody so very much. Thank you for freaking 14 subs tonight. That's really nice. Keeping us up above 300. I had a big sub drop, big follower drop uh, while I was away, but I'm honestly, this is the first time in a long time I'm not nervous about it. Um, just because I know how supportive this community is. We got plenty of September left to grind out content, make some fun stuff, go on adventures, maybe finally finish Soma. I don't know. I'm feeling crazy these days. I can do anything I want. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for being here. I keep thinking it's Sunday. Antichrist Bear, I'm right there with you. My brain is all turned around from the break that I just took. But it's great to be back. It's wonderful to see you all again. Please stick around for the raid over to Morgan's stream. I hope you have a blast over there as well. Ask her about makeup. Ask her about skincare. She likes talking about stuff besides just the spiritual stuff as well. Um, always, always open to all of her own conversations, too. So... Yes, Brookie, we had a great time in Toronto. Thank you. We miss you too. Oh, thank you very much. Lovely to have you all here, truly. All right, let's get this raid going. Uh, let me get a raid message. Um, here we go. Here we go. I think she's about to go live. So, oh, she just went live. So I'm going to drop you guys off over there. Please stick around and make her stream great as, as just as much fun as this one was for me. Thank you, everybody. Awesome seeing y'all. Anyway, chat. Thank you for the follows, bit subs, resubs, gifted subs, donations. Everything that came through here tonight means the world to me. Thanks for supporting this nonsense, whatever my channel is these days and whatever my content is these days, whoever I am these days. I'm just me. Thank you so much. I, I feel so much more confident after this break i'm so ready to tackle everything with all of you this is awesome thank you so so much thank you everybody i hope you all uh, had a great time chatting lurking no matter what you did hope you have an absolutely wonderful morning afternoon evening night whatever it is for you you guys are the best in the world i love every single one of you so very much i really really do finger hearts as usual i'm gonna do this yep uh thank you brookie for hooking up everyone with morgan's shout out command as well just in case you don't get pulled in through the raid. But I'm starting that now. Okay. And if uh, you don't have the Gerb Hearts emote, the Gerb Heart emote, feel free to um, include whatever your favorite hearts are in there as well. But join this raid. I'm going to get it sent over to Morgan here. Probably right now. I'm going to get going. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you again tomorrow. We're going to have a good time then. Goodbye, everybody. Selfish Sunday tomorrow. Probably we'll start a new game is my thought. We'll see, though. I might just get back to this. Who knows? Anyway, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.